Welcome to Watch, Review, Repeat. This is the podcast where two best friends discuss the latest in film and television and then do it all over again the following week. My name is Batman, and joining me is Colton Brown and Andrew Meadows. Batman! What's going on, Batman? Batman, uh, Batman's on the podcast. That's pretty cool, huh? And so is Henrique Jamie! Holy podcast, Batman. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So, uh, as as our listeners can probably gather, uh, this might be a Batman centric episode. I like Batman. I think he's a great character. You're a good guy, Batman. Thanks. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna put Batman in the back pocket for now. Um, <laughs> otherwise, it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult uh, having so many voices. You know, we want to want to keep it down to three. Uh, it's the fight so, crime too. Yeah, he's busy. He's got he's got shit to do. You know, so. <laughs> Uh, this is bonus episode number seven. Uh, as Andrew mentioned, Enrique Jamie is joining us uh, for, uh, I've lost count at this point, but uh, I think it's your fourth bonus episode appearance. So I, w- I would say you're becoming a regular on this uh, part of the podcast. Uh, and we're talking the Dark Knight trilogy on this bonus episode, the uh, Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy. Uh we just passed the 10 year anniversary of the release of the dark Knight uh, back in July of 2008. And uh, so I, I feel like that's good enough reason to have an episode on uh, arguably one of the best superhero trilogies uh, that we have ever seen. So um, it's a bonus episode, which means that uh, for our supporters on Patreon, you have timed exclusive access to this episode. So if you are a supporter on uh, Patreon, uh, we greatly appreciate that. Uh, and uh, we hope you stick around and uh, look forward to future bonus episodes and enjoy that uh, early access that you get to all of our regular episodes. And if you are not a Patreon, well, you can get access to all of those things I just mentioned simply by heading to watchreviewrepeat.com, clicking the premium tab and following the become a patron button and you're going to be set up. It's going to be a good time. Good time for everyone. So uh, we're talking the Dark Knight trilogy. So uh, I, I feel like perhaps the most appropriate place to start is is with a, perhaps a, a brief uh, run up to the release of Batman Begins in two thousand five, because as we all know, this is not Batman's uh, first foray into. Well, it's not his first foray into the cinematic medium. It's also uh, well past his first foray into the uh, live action medium. Uh, but it's a far cry from those things, I would say. Uh, you know, we had the 1966 um, Batman television series with Adam West as Batman. Yeah. Uh, but, but you know, cinematically, uh, 1989, Batman uh, from Tim Burton starring Michael Keaton as uh, Bruce Wayne and Batman, Jack Nicholson as a Joker. And, and, you know, that spawned a sequel with Batman Returns. And then the franchise kind of started taking uh, perhaps a shakier direction, uh, shall we say. Batman Forever, 1995. And then, uh, yeah, the introduction of Nipples to the Batsuit, uh, one of the the greatest decisions uh, in Hollywood (laughs) history. 1997 brings Batman and Robin. Uh, You know, WB wanted to sell some toys and they probably sold a a handful, but uh, I owned a few. Yeah, well, yeah, case in point. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, basically after 1997, you know, Batman and Robin is kind of, it, it kind of lands with a thud. It, you know, I, I have no idea why. I mean, had inspired casting like Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze, George Clooney just owning the role of Batman. But for some reason, it just didn't quite land with everyone. Can't put my finger on it. But, you know, where do you go from there? You know, maybe maybe uh, WP isn't having all the success that they want with the Batman franchise. Um and so I, I will, I will kind of take you guys uh, through some of this, uh, and, and this is largely for the benefit of our listeners who really don't know a whole lot about this, and perhaps some of you guys aren't uh, up to speed with kind of the uh, cinematic developments that basically took place between 1997 and 2005, which is, I mean, that's almost two decades worth of time. So uh, there was actually there was actually uh, an attempt to make a Batman five, uh, you know, to be part of that uh, Burton Schumacher uh, chronology. And uh, again, you know, the response to Batman and Robin, not great. And, uh, you know, that one kind of goes out the window. Um, it was a 
it was actually going to be called Batman Unchained. Uh, I was going to have the Scarecrow as the villain. The Joker was going to be back as a hallucination. Harley Quinn was going to be in it, mm-hmm. except she was going to be the Joker's daughter, which is weird. What? But you know, it, they, you know, they they just they just That's do whatever strange. they want over there. So <laughs> that didn't happen. Uh, as as you might expect, and then uh, there was also another kind of attempt to do something called Batman Dark Knight. Uh, the Dark Knight is spelled very differently. It's like D A R and then K N I G H T, all one word. Hmm. Uh, and this was kind of basically about a Batman that's that's you know hung up the hood, uh, and uh, Jonathan Crane Scarecrow is also in this one. Uh, and he has a confrontation with uh, his colleague Doctor Kirk Langstrom, who turns into the man bat and so so batman has to you know go back to being batman to to clear his name because everyone's like oh shit it's the man bat fucking shit up and you know they, they, they think it's actually batman <laughs> that movie didn't get made either <laughs> common mistake you know uh and may have then, dodged uh, a bullet with that one <laughs> uh we get we get a batman beyond adaptation in the works uh oh. based on the animated show and that quickly gets killed because they hire andrew's man Darren Aronofsky to direct Batman Year One. Uh, he was hired. I mean, this this was going to happen. You know, they got a had a script basically going for it. Uh, you can actually find the script for this online. It's really bad. Uh, as a side note. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but you know, it, it was almost an adaptation of the Batman Year One comic, and then that didn't happen because WB had this grand idea to do something called Batman versus Superman. Uh, now, uh, you know, you might be thinking like, well, they did Ooh. do that. They did. Yeah. Like, uh, 10 years after the fact or f- what, 15 years after the fact, I guess, probably closer to it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they hired a director named Mick G to do this. Um, now you might recognize him as the director of cinematic classics, such as Charlie's Angels and Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. Ooh, so nice. needless to say, this project was in very good hands but not good enough hands because they canceled it yeah you know it's not gonna happen and then finally and then finally david goyer comes along christopher nolan comes along batman begins comes along 2005 batman finally gets a cinematic project that finally gets made finally gets released in theaters june 15th 2005 as i mentioned christopher nolan and david goyer wrote it it was directed by christopher nolan who up till this point i I guess this is i don't have it in front of me so i'm kind of just going off of my my memory of nolan's filmography he he, he'd done uh following insomnia memento a fantastic film as a side note and uh since then he's gone on to do a lot of things Certainly, uh, this trilogy among those, Inception, um, Interstellar, Dunkirk, um, super successful director. Um, Inception? Did you say Inception? I did say Inception. Yeah. Oh, okay. But maybe by you saying Inception, it was kind of like an Inception of maybe my Inception. Accepted you. <laughs> yeah. I planted the idea. No, you planted the fucking idea, man. I planted it, man. You didn't even know it. You didn't even <laughs> fucking know it, man. Clearly, you don't have uh, the mind training that... Uh, <laughs> Whoever I haven't seen in a while, so I was gonna. You know I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it at this point because I'll get myself in trouble. Uh, Batman Begins. It stars Christian Bale as Bruce Wayne slash Batman, Michael Caine, uh, Michael Caine as Alfred Pennyworth, Liam Neeson as uh, Raz Al Ghul, Katie Holmes as uh, D A Rachel Dawes, Gary Oldman as because uh, he's I guess he's Sergeant Gordon in this uh, future Commissioner Gordon. Killian Murphy as Jonathan Crane slash the Scarecrow, Tom Wilkinson as Carmine Falcone, uh, and then uh, Rutger Hauer, Ken Watanabe, and Morgan Freeman round out the cast. Uh, look, full spoilers for this, um, and I'll give a quick kind of rundown of it. If you haven't seen Batman Begins in a while, like holy shit, do yourself a favor, <laughs> and, and and honestly watch the whole trilogy because it's. I found, I mean, obviously we're going to watch it for the purposes of this episode anyway, but I found that you watch Batman Begins and you you just want to watch the next one. And then you watch The oh, Dark yeah. Knight and mm-hmm. you just want to watch Rises. Like, it just works like that. So once you, once you start, you just can't stop. Uh, but in this movie, in Batman Begins, after training with his mentor, Batman begins his fight to free crime-ridden Gotham City from corruption. And, uh... That's uh, that's only scratching the surface. So I'll let you guys dig a little deeper. I've been talking, hogging the mic for a while here. 
What do you guys think about Batman Begins? I like this movie, man. This this is a very good Batman origin, um, and I think mm, I don't. Th- I think up at, to this point, the the death of the Waynes hadn't been too overplayed. I mean, this is definitely not the first time. I actually pulled up a list of the the ten best uh, deaths of Bruce Wayne's parents, and spoilers: this one was ranked as number one by the L.A. Times. So, mm. you know, it's good. But yeah, no, like it, if you're interested in the Batman mythos, then this is some essential viewing. You know, you really see why he's the Batman, and then this whole philosophy why. He chose bats, what, why he fights crime the way he does, why he doesn't kill people, his view on criminals. And you got two good villains, you know, you got Scarecrow and you got uh, Reza, Ra's al Ghul. And every time I rewatch it, I kind of appreciate different things from the movie. So um, I think I've been a pretty big fan of this and just gotten a bigger fan as the years have gone by. But what do you think, Andrew? Well, um, I remember when this movie was, when it, when it came out, um, and it blew my mind. I was so excited. Um, and I, I really think that this, this Batman and this, the, it, cause it really does kick off a universe where it's much more grounded. Um, we've never seen, I, I, I can't recall, but I don't think in a superhero movie we've, we've had a grounded experience. Um, not like this anyways. It, I mean, this feels very real. Um, and I think it is the most, um, well versed Batman. Like he's just, he's, he's a, he's a fully realized character and they do a really good job of characterizing him, I think. Um, and it just, I don't it, it, his suit is functional. I mean, with the exception of maybe the uh, uh, the cowl. I don't think he can turn his head in this one. Um, but the, the, the suit has a purpose and they go into how he builds all his gear. It's so cool. Um, and, and Ra's all, uh, fucking Gary Oldman. Oh my God. Gary Oldman, Gary Oldman's great. I get pumped up. Um, Michael Caine, the cast is, the cast is pretty strong. Um, I think those three are probably my favorite. Christian Bale's Christian Bale. When people say, Who's your James Bond or who's who's your Batman? You know what I mean? That everybody has those iconic actors that portray certain characters. Um, Christian Bale is my Batman. You think Batman? I think of Christian Bale. Uh, maybe that's just because I grew up with Christian Bale being Batman. Um, but I really think I really think he's probably the best Batman. He's got a Batman voice, which is cool. Um, <laughs> I'm Batman. Exactly. Oh, he's know? back. <laughs> <laughs> I was fighting crime, but I wanted to make sure you guys were saying nice things about me. That's right. And fucking Batman kick your ass. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's, uh, and I think it really set a precedence for, for, um, f- for future, for future movies. You know, I, it, it, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it, man. It's just really fucking good. <laughs> yeah. I feel like for better, or for worse, Christopher Nolan kind of started the, you know, the gritty version of not just Batman, but just superhero movies where they went from bat nipples and, you know, colorful, uh, like fights and, you know, crazy villains, like the the version of two face that, um, (laughs) uh, who, who played two face Tommy Lee Jones, Tommy Tommy Lee Lee Jones. Jones, Yeah. yeah, His version of two face. Uh, yeah, that Riddler Enigma. and <laughs> and even Mister Freeze to you know some pretty scary villains. Like just even in this movie, Razago isn't necessarily scary, you know, in the traditional sense. But it's almost scary, like how calculating and smart he is. But Scarecrow is pretty scary. Like his mask, you know, will give you nightmares even if you don't take his uh his scare gas, his fear gas. But, you know, that definitely changed the how superhero movies kind of were looked up, upon. And I, I feel like this is the beginning, too, of the, the cinematic superhero movie experience. I think X-Men was the only other series that was really big at this time. 
you know, the MCU wasn't around yet, so... Uh, I, I would argue the Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's... A, which that's just, uh, just one and two had, time, had were yeah. out prior to Begins, but yeah. That's true. But yeah, I, I, I think I think kind of what you're saying, uh, you know, is that this kind of pushed superhero films, and, and I don't know I don't know that it was necessarily a more serious direction, but it, it went in a direction that was taken more seriously, I would, I would definitely say. You know, because... Yeah, you know, the X-Men films were always kind of afraid of their comic book roots. You know, they had the black leather suits, but it's at its core, it was still about, you know, mutants with superpowers. Spider-Man was full on campy, which, you know, worked for it, I, I think. Maybe not including Spider-Man 3. <laughs> but this is, uh, you know, I think, Andrew, you talked about it. It's it's a grounded take on the mythos. And I, I think what makes it work so well is that Batman is probably one of the few characters that you can really get away with it, um, at, you know, having that approach because he's a character that doesn't have superpowers. His his superpower is that he's rich, uh, as as the Ben Affleck Batman uh, Jesus Christ says. <laughs> but no, it it, it is true. Uh, you know, it's 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 more than that obviously you know this movie does a lot for the character in terms of establishing the character and, and, and showing you why he he is to be taken seriously um and and i think that that's why the movie works so well is because it, for my money this is the best cinematic depiction of batman and i would say that even through the three movies in this trilogy it is still the best depiction of batman as a character uh, I'm not going to say that it's the best film in the trilogy, um, but I think that this hits the mark for me of everything that I kind of wanted out of a Batman movie. And it's interesting to say that because I, you know, I rewatch these movies and they do play fast and loose with a lot of the comic book mythology. You know, I, I always kind of, you know, and, and watching a lot of DC's recent output, I always kind of like, why don't they just make it more like the comics? And then, and then I watch these and I'm like, well, you don't have to make it like the comics. You, you just have to make it good. You just have to make a good movie. <laughs> yeah. and, and obviously that's go. easier said than done. <laughs> but I, I think that this trilogy and certainly this movie and everything, it just goes to show that you need to start with something. You need to start with material that's good and hire people that can elevate that material. So you have that in basically every facet of the production here aside oh, from yeah. maybe aside from maybe david goyer and i will argue till the end of my days that this movie works as well as it does because the nolan brothers mitigated any david goyer-esque influences it might otherwise have had <laughs> there's still remnants of his i think script in here there's some dialogue especially towards the end you know excuse me i've got a city to destroy and i'm like oh that's a goyer line right there but you know there is a little bit of cheese in some of the other uh, movies here, uh, you know, just kind of lines here and there. It's just like, okay, you know, you know, okay. But moreover, you know, Christopher Nolan, as as a director here, um, it plays to his strengths, and, and you know, it also exposes some of his weaknesses. I think that the action uh, sequences in this movie are particularly jarring uh, for the most part, and that uh, a lot of quick cuts, a lot of close up, shaky cam type stuff. And I think he got better about it throughout the series, but it's really kind of uh, bad uh, at, at parts here, uh, distractingly so. And, and so I think that's unfortunate. But the character work, obviously, that's something that, that he excels at. And uh, it's something that's really on display here. And it's realized by arguably one of the most talented casts in... I guess really superhero films, which again, you know, I would say prior to this point, I don't know that you're pulling in the likes of the Michael Caines. I don't know that you're pulling in the likes of the Liam Neeson's, the Morgan Freeman's, like there's a lot of really, really talented actors here. And, you know, Christian Bale, obviously uh, in in the years since he he was Batman, I mean, he's, you know, he's kind of A-list Hollywood now. I don't think he was at the time. Um, I remember at the time him being a particularly um, well sought actor from, from the fans that was, um, on the superhero hype forums a lot in my youth. And he was kind of the number one like fan pick for Bruce Wayne and Batman. And usually that's, usually that's a bad thing because fans have kind of the wrong interests at heart. You know, it's more like he really looks the role, but you know, they got it right. But he had already played like the, he already played the American playboy kind of role with American psycho. Right. Yeah, he did that, and, you know, Equilibrium, you know, we saw some acting chops from him, but I, I would say other than those two roles, I, I don't think 
most people really had any sort of frame of reference for Christian Bale. And even those two movies were pretty, you know, I don't, neither of them Obscure. were exactly box office I mean, uh, smash successes when they came out. So uh, yeah, I, I, there's, uh, there's a lot to like in this movie is, is kind of what I'm getting at. So, uh, you know, you guys hit on some of the stuff that, you know, that really that stuck score? out for me. And you just beat me to the punch yet again. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Hans Zimmer and uh, James Newton Howard's score here is phenomenal. Oh my um, goodness. And I think that's consistent again through the trilogy. So I think Howard worked on, I think he wrote some of the score for the dark Knight, And then I think Zimmer did the rises score um, on his own entirely. Um, it, it, it's, it's amazing. You know, and it, it's, it's, it's a soundtrack for me through all of these movies that I will listen to outside of, you know, watching the movie. Like, it's like, you know, I, I need study music or something like that. You put on fucking Batman music, you know, you need to kind of get in the mood of something like that. You put on the Batman music and, you know, you can't do that for a lot of scores. I mean, I, I know I love, I, See, there are yeah, a lot you, of scores you, you that, that really kind of, well, it's, it's only fair. What goes around comes around, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's a phenomenal score. And, um, yeah, well, uh, Andrew, you know, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you say what you wanted to say. I don't want. I don't want to. You know, there's too much there's time. there's scores that just fill silence. You know what I mean? They kind of just used to build a mood. Um, maybe like a horror movie score. You know what I mean? It's just used to build tension. It's mm. not. Yeah. It's not necessarily anything drastically important. But you get. I mean, it's super important. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to. I don't want to disregard it. But then there's certain scores that are written in such a way to where they elevate the film, or you could almost close your eyes and imagine what's happening based on the score. You know, and the, it, it's so passionate, it's so good. Oh, the score, I love it, man. It's so, it's so tense, you know, like it yes. really raises the tension that you feel uh, in certain scenes. But it's also very heroic at times. And like it, it just mixes a lot of that drama with the, the superhero aspect of it really well. The build up, man, that, tr- that it's got like this iconic. I, I, I can't do it with my mouth but <laughs> there's like this iconic build up to where when when he when he does something really fucking batmanish and it <laughs> and it explodes with batman juices it's so good <laughs> <laughs> my lord what have you done <laughs> um, no but it's uh the 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 um it's definitely one of the um you know like star wars has an iconic iconic score um uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Everybody knows that score, you know. Um, Another Zimmer. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then there's fucking Batman Begins and the Dark Knight trilogy. Uh, it, it's got an iconic score and it's awesome. It's very good. And I, and I think it's. You know, I don't know if you could necessarily recognize like individual pieces on their own, but certainly you know kind of kind of what you're saying, like the 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 swell, you know, in certain moments. Like if you just played that isolated from any sort of video, I think. I, I would imagine a lot of people be like that's fucking Batman. Like it's got oh, that yeah. sort of you know feel and tone to it. And you know I think Hans Zimmer for me is a composer that that tends to kind of repeat his own work sometimes. Um, that TikTok is in here. It's the same tick I heard. I, re- I remember hearing in um, uh, what is it? Inception. No, maybe it maybe it is an Inception. I think Dunkirk uh, probably. Most recently it was Dunkirk though. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know when he started the TikTok. I don't know if it started with this or not, but it seems to be a common trope with his music. Yeah, and and that's kind of what I mean. But he's obviously exceptionally talented. Um, and, and I, but I, I, I think probably a lot of the advantage in you know having some nostalgia, you know, obviously for this trilogy and for the score here too, is that this is kind of you know based on how old we all are. Um, and how old we were, you know, kind of when this is coming out, like this, this is kind of right in the core of like, this is, this is, you know, this is, you know, Andrew, you talked about it. It's our Batman growing up, Yeah, you know, and, and you could, you know, that, that kind of score, that kind of, those kind of cues, like those are built into our like muscle fibers. Like we heard that, <laughs> like that's fucking Batman. You just can't help but get fucking hyped about it, man. It's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah, it is. It's fucking Batman. You know what else gets me fucking hyped is the Tumblr. Oh, oh God! Yes, yeah. when they first showed that Tumblr, I, you know, I haven't watched these movies in in a long time, and I was really excited to cover them again. I, I probably should have said this at the beginning, but frame by frame by frame by frame, up until where I mean, we haven't really got into it, but where it kind of started to drop off a little bit, I was pumped up 
from the get go. Um, every I, I saw I, I don't know. I, was, I had a few beers. I wasn't drunk or anything, but goddamn, I was hyped every time something happened. And they shot. They had the opening shot of the tumbler. Does it come in black? You know, after he drove it. Fuck, man, so cool, so cool. It's got the tires like rubbing up on the ground. You know. Oh, and the first time you see so an cool. action too, like you know, chasing down people. Oh, yeah, some good stuff. He's flying on rooftops. <laughs> What's it look like? <laughs> it's a tank. black tank. tank. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I remember, you know, when they first basically, again, uh, like I said, I was on superhero hype forums religiously before this movie came out. And I remember, you know, kind of when they first showed that off and I'm just like, that's not the Batmobile. But it's crazy how, you know, you watch the movie and, you know, you buy into everything, you know, the the, the suit that he's wearing, you know, how he kind of basically assembles these components to, to become, you know, the Batman suit and the tumbler, you know, getting repurposed into kind of the, you know, the quote unquote Batmobile without actually being referred to as such. It's so functional. It's so badass. Like, right. it's hard to it's hard to go back almost to like, you know, the traditional Batmobile with the little you know, wings kind of coming off the side, and you know, I'm like, that's eh, kind of goofy, you know. And that's and where like, you get into the really grounded aspects of this film. Like his his suit is a military, um, it's a military bulletproof armor suit, you know. Um, mm-hmm. His first uh, spelunking, right? Well, no, maybe not right, but yeah, that's what he says. <laughs> <laughs> um, his uh, his fucking his 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 cape, his cape is has a functional purpose, so he can fucking glide. You know what I mean? It's not. I mean, I, that maybe that was the functional purpose of his cape all along, but it always seemed just to be a fucking stupid. You know, just everybody's got a cape, you know. Um, the 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 tumbler is a military. It was a what a military breaching vehicle. Uh, it was used to jump across like creeks and stuff. Bridging yeah, vehicle, bridges. I think, is what they yeah. said. Um, and everything, and that extends throughout the uh, that extends throughout the trilogy. There's nothing that happens as far as Batman's concerned that it it doesn't serve a functional grounded purpose before he has it. You know. Yeah, and, and there's usually you know an element of reality to it. I I wouldn't. Uh, I I've seen a lot of people kind of throw the word realistic around this franchise. I I wouldn't agree with that, but I think grounded is is a really good description. You know, there is an attempt to render an explanation for basically every piece of technology that you see even if it's kind of a heightened reality there's still some sort of motivation there's still some sort of explanation that doesn't feel like an ass pull you know which which is good and and again because batman is a character that yeah he's just got tons of money is at his disposal you know his company has used r&d to kind of develop you know military ton of cool military, ass military grade technology exactly like it all just works like it, it's almost it like makes lockheed sense. martin the ceo of lockheed martin wanted to be a fucking vigilante you don't think that motherfucker fly around in a jet? Of course he would. <laughs> He'd have a badass jet. He might end up being like Iron Man, you know? But, and anyways, I, I digress. Yeah. <laughs> but it's true. It's cool. It's so cool, man. And Gary Oldman sells it. And, you know, he's putting that little coat on on, 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 little, uh, on little Bruce Wayne. And it was real sad, you know? And <sighs> Michael Caine. Fucking Michael Caine, man. The perfect butler. He really is. He cares about Bruce Wayne, and is this the best iteration of Alfred? I re- I'm, I'm really a uh, uh, what's his name? The only iteration of Michael Caine that I like better is probably the one from the most recent Batman. Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons. That's probably my favorite. Well, there's also the uh, Michael Goff classic uh, iteration. Is that the from, super fucking old one? Uh, yeah, from from the uh, the Burton and Schumacher films. He was too old. He was too old. <laughs> yeah. I, well, actually, I, I uh, hold on. Gotham. We can't forget about Gotham now. Um, oh. Uh, Sean Pertwee. Uh, we can't forget about that uh, iteration of Alfred. He's, he's a little younger, you know. So it's so it might might be more up your alley, Andrew. You know. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I need to look him up. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I'm not quite sure who that is. No, I, it's it's my favorite iteration of Alfred. You know, Michael Caine is fantastic in that role. I, again, everyone is fantastic here. Uh, well, you know, we'll get into, I guess, the Rachel uh, issue of recasting when we get over to The Dark Knight. But Katie Holmes, to me, feels like the weak link in a really good cast. 
Uh, I, I I will say like Liam Neeson as Ra's al Ghul is fantastic, or I guess Ken Watanabe as sort of Ra's al Ghul, um, and Liam Neeson as Jacquard or, or whatever. He's Ra's al Ghul. It's fine. Let me ask you something. Uh, I really I, and I I can't believe I'm saying this. I really liked uh, the I like I li- really like the way that actor from the CW show portrayed Ra's al Ghul. Uh, yeah, Matt Nabel, um, season three of Arrow. Yeah, well, I liked him. Yeah, I, I I thought he was good. I I think. I think this is a better version of Roz across the board, but yeah, I think I think he did a pretty good job with uh, that guy. Had really given. strong moments. I mean, I guess there's only one episode I really, really, really liked him. The fight scene. Yeah, it was that that yeah where he kicks his ass. Yeah. He also had the unfortunate distinction of being in that one episode where they made him wear the Green Arrow outfit and he looked ridiculous in it. You guys probably <laughs> forgot about that. Yeah, I forgot about that. But I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I don't forgive and I don't forget. I'm bad man. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, now, yeah, 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 like, you know, <laughs> we're getting we're getting a little rambly here, so let's uh, let's kind of you know, uh, I guess kind of last minute thoughts um, before we kind of you know really kind of tie everything together and move on. I think this sets the stage for for me personally at least. That, like this is the level of Batman from like here on out that I'd want in a movie, either. You know, this isn't the most comic book accurate, but I think just it struck the balance of all the right things. And if you're going to try to do another Batman film, you don't have to replicate this. But I think you need to get it on a similar level as this for me. It's almost like a quintessential uh, origin story for sure. Oh, yeah. No, like this is like cinematic. Like definitely this is this is my like quintessential Batman origin story. I think it's probably the best origin story for any superhero film that's what i'm saying it's the you look up i mean if you were to look up origin story i mean this would be this would be the one that really set the stage for it in my opinion i think i don't think there was anything quite like it before and there really hasn't been anything that's kind of emulated it to this point either um and and it's my hope i talked about this on on one of our recent episodes it looks like Captain Marvel is almost going for a similar blueprint in terms of how the plot's constructed. Okay. You know, this one kind of, you know, intercuts between modern day, you know, Bruce kind of, uh, you know, being in prison, training with the, the League of Shadows and, you know, um, him, you know, as kind of a young adult, you know, kind of filled with hate towards Joe Chill and all that. And it's really strong because it doesn't bog you down with 30 minutes of, oh, it, it, he's getting, oh, he's going to get bit by a spider and get spider powers. Gee, I didn't see that fucking coming. Or, you know, in this case, oh, it, he's a young kid and, you know, his parents are going to get shot and he's going to be sad. Oh, didn't see that coming. You know, there's still, it's still there. You know, you don't get me wrong, but it's still kind of, it, it's, the movie is structured in a way that it doesn't beat you over the head and bore you with it, but it really, really gets you on board with this character, you know, right. and, and, and that's, that's where it shines is, is really just, Using that editing structure, and I know I guess Nolan is is pretty known for kind of nonlinear plot structures. I think it's less present in the next couple of films, but it's it's really I think uh, executed very well here, and I think that that's why pretty much the entire origin story, basically up until the point of him becoming Batman, for me is the best anything in this entire trilogy. I unfortunately think that the last third, the third act of this is a good step down. I don't think it's bad. I just think that it kind of loses a step once. <laughs> it's weird. It loses a step pretty much, you know, that whole sequence of Batman of the docks is fucking awesome. You know, it's a super right. badass sequence, oh, super yeah. awesome so introduction Batman. to Batman, you know? And then after that, I kind of feel like once the villain's plan kind of comes together, it, it loses a little bit, weirdly enough. Um, but it does so much right that, it would be hard to maintain. Like it's ten out of ten material, I would say, for like two thirds of this movie, and then it jumps down to like seven, eight out of ten type material. Um, but at the same time, you know, like I said, that's such such a such a high bar to kind of reach, and the fact that it even got there in the first place in a Batman movie, in a superhero movie, you know. And see, that's just crazy. the thing; it does so much without actually having Batman. I think the best, I think the best two thirds of this movie. Um, had very little Batman. You know what I mean? Uh, it was Bruce Wayne, and it was him. It was him learning ninjutsu and shit. And then it was 
it was him coming back home and and trying to exact revenge and it was him finding some gadgets and stuff and slowly evolving into Batman and then once he became Batman I think it kind of I think you did have the spot in the docks there that was cool um but I think it kind of dropped off I mean it was very much I think my favorite parts was the parts where it was Bruce Wayne and and uh him finding Batman you know does that make sense yeah, no, uh, that, that's pretty much what I said. So, no, yeah, um, okay, I'm 100 in agreement with you there. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, um, right on, yeah. So I have two last things I want to shout out. Um, first of which is super awesome to see the scarecrow used here. Um, big fan of the character in the comics. Um, it's the type of character I feel like it was begging to be used on the big screen, and, and we did get close as I talked about. Um, but the I do wish worse. Th- yeah, I I loved the use of like the fear toxin and kind of the effects on people, yeah. but I wish there was more of it. I wanted more of that. So cool, but wanted more. But we did get a little bit more scarecrow throughout the trilogy. Yeah, Nothing quite to the, the level here, but um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed his inclusion. That was cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my second thing is the ending was the hypest shit in two thousand five. The you know flipping the card over and seeing the Joker <laughs> yeah. card. <laughs> oh man, that is that's like the greatest kind of sequel setup you can get. I mean, Marvel's obviously kind of done something similar with kind of the post credits, but that's just really, really amazing use of world building in a way that doesn't. It, you know, it's obviously sequel bait, but it feels natural. Like like Batman's established. Well, it only makes sense that his arch enemy would would now become established and you know rise up against him. So I really, really enjoyed. That, and kudos so. to everyone involved. For not starting out with the Joker, starting out with Ra's al Ghul and Scarecrow. Right. Yeah, you know? take Ra's al Ghul and Scarecrow, two two characters that have never been seen um, in live action prior to this. Like, yeah, that's awesome. No Joker, no Two Face, no you know we, characters we never saw in the four movies. Like, that's that's super smart. You know, Spider Man Homecoming did the same thing. Oh, we've got eighteen Spider Man movies. Let's do the fucking Vulture. You know, like, yeah, do that's, do characters do that we haven't seen. <laughs> right. Next one, we're going to get uh, Mysterio. Fuck yeah. yeah exactly. So cool. Anyways, uh, we can move on to the next one. Well, I have a couple uh, last bit of things. So uh, first of all, I want to invite Batman back in here um, to uh, let us know what his favorite line of dialogue is. From get on in here, guys, Batman. Get on if you guys here. disagree with Batman, you'll have to let him know. But um, I'll, I'll let him uh, take the mic. It's not who I am underneath, but what I do... It defines me. Agree? Disagree? I agree. Uh, that's a pretty good that's one. That's a pretty good one. It's a pretty good one, right? And then he jumps off the fucking building. You jump off the building, I mean. You jump off that fucking building, Batman. You're so cool. Drop a one-liner like that and jump off a building. God damn. I didn't get to say thank you. I know never have to. <laughs> uh, all right, and... Uh, Continue our through line from all of our bonus episodes. Favorite moments. Um, you know, we're, 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 well, we might be here all night at this pace. So um, I'll start. Um, I, I know I've already kind of talked about it a bit, so there's really not much to elaborate upon here. Uh, the whole League of Shadows training, basically, I mean, it's effectively kind of, uh, you know, spliced throughout the first two acts of the movie, but all the bits of him, you know, kind of becoming the ninja and the, especially the fight on the ice, you know, where he has that dialogue with, um, Ducard at that point, Rosal Ghoul. Really, really great stuff. So that's mine. Um, you guys have any picks for this? I think the first time he becomes Batman, you just just so much build up to it and just to see the the costume and him in action. That that's like the high point of the movie for me. That's the one where he it ends in the in the the, the tumbler, right? Tumbler scene? Um I guess yeah, extending all the way like through that, yeah. Okay. Well, Colton, you stole mine. And Henry stole mine. Second one. Fuck. <laughs> uh, <sighs> well, I think the Tumblr bit's a bit later, isn't it? Isn't that? Isn't that when he has like, uh, like Rachel? When Rachel gets hit? Yeah, Rachel yeah, gets more hit by the So I mean, that's like a whole like twenty-minute segment if you're talking about that. But okay, well, I guess I'll I, I guess I'll pick the Tumblr scene. Yeah, it's a good pick. Uh, although that Im- that 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 if I had to pick one frame. One frame of a movie, I would probably say my favorite frame is that uh, that the the f- the fear gas, the fucking horse, mm-hmm. the flaming the flaming nostrils and the red eyes with him riding the horse. I thought that was badass. It was so cool. Yeah, 
Also, um, when he goes kind of full spread with the cape, when yes. he's coming down with all the bats with the sonar, that's pretty fucking oh, cool, yeah. too. It's pretty great. All right. Pretty great. So, uh, let's talk about something else that's pretty great, uh, and that is a movie by the name of The Dark Knight, released July 18th, 2008, written by Jonathan Nolan and Christopher Nolan, directed again by Christopher Nolan, returns Christian Bale, Michael Caine, Gary Oldman, and Morgan Freeman to the cast, and it brings some newcomers in the form of the late Heath Ledger as the Joker, Aaron Eckhart as Harvey Dent, and uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal as a recast Rachel Dawes replacing uh, Katie Holmes from Batman Begins here. When a menace known as the Joker wreaks havoc and chaos on the people of Gotham City, Batman must accept one of the greatest psychological and physical tests of his ability to fight injustice, the tools of cowards and criminals. Ooh. So, again, um, The Dark Knight, I'll, I'll let you guys kind of, um, you know, open up the discussion. Uh, this is the best Batman movie? Yeah. Am I alone in thinking that? I No, that's that's my favorite Batman movie. I, again, um, I don't think it's the best depiction of Batman, but it may be the best movie in the trilogy. We'll best get to Batman it. Batman will, will period, yeah. We will have a definitive rankings um, towards the end of the episode, so of course stay tuned for that. Although you can probably <laughs> gather, uh, given that there's only three <laughs> movies, what exactly uh, the loose rankings will be. But maybe someone will throw a curveball in there. Who's to say? Maybe. Well, maybe. I think um, I think that this movie has incredibly strong points. Um, I think. Uh, I think there's parts that it wavers. Like for example, I, like you said, this I don't think this is the best depiction of Batman. Um, I think this is probably my favorite. It's probably my favorite depiction of uh, Gary Oldman um, as uh, um, fuck, Commissioner Gordon. Um, Heath Ledger knocks it out of the park. Um, he told. I mean, he he he's a fucking scary Joker, man. Um, he's really good really really good uh, and I haven't watched this movie in forever I haven't watched any of them in a really long time I'm actually really disappointed because I have a nice blu-ray box and I opened up the book and it still smelled like a new book and the whole nine yards man um, and that when especially when you look at the aftermath and stuff of Heath Ledger because there was a lot of it wasn't I mean I don't I don't want to talk out of turn here but didn't didn't this role almost break him when it so, put him in a really uh, dark place, and, and I, I think yeah, some people I, say yeah, I think I think a lot of people feel that it contributed to kind of his mental state that that ultimately led to his death. You know, he talked about his preparation for the role. You know, he kind of kept like a like a journal or a diary. You know, kind of brought him to like a, a like a dark place. I think it sounded like he kind of locked himself, you know, in like a hotel room and kind of tried to just envelop himself into this role as much as possible. So I mean, I could certainly see. You know, the argument that, that it had that kind of effect on his mental state. And, and it's a role that is really dark, you know. So, yeah, I, it, he definitely went to some serious lengths to, to kind of realize Channel this that character. Role. Yeah. Yeah. And you can fucking feel it. It's a super, super compelling character. Um, so he knocked it out of the park. I, I do not I do not care for the recasting. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't care for this, uh, this Rachel. Um, I feel like Rachel's always been kind of a, a just a, I feel like Rachel's always been a short and I don't, I don't really never cared for the Rachel character, I guess. I don't know. Did you prefer Katie Holmes in the, no, Batman no, Games, I don't. Or? I just don't, I just don't like any of them. I think they're all kind of, I just don't like any of them, period. Um, although Christian Bale's relationship with her in this was very evident and that was a very, uh, it, she played in a very important role in this movie, um, and I did like that. I like how she was incorporated into the film, but I just didn't. I just didn't care for. I just didn't care for her. I guess I don't know. Um, what else is there? The score in this one. The score in this one's fucking crazy. That bike, the 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 b- bat pod. Is that what it's called mm-hmm. in this? Yeah, bat pod. Yeah, when it ejects, I I I. I was I, I think I was kind of buzzed when I watched this one because I came in hyped. <laughs> <laughs> when that when that shit when that when that bike pod ejected from that tumbler, it's a like, holy shit! I got pumped. I actually rewinded it and watched it again. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a it's an incredible movie. Incredible movie. I'll ramble. I'll ramble. I love these movies. 
Uh, we've we've rambled this entire yeah. episode, my friend. So uh, ramble on if you feel so inclined. <laughs> just just remember, some of us got to get to bed at some point, and some of our listeners are you know they they got shit to do too. So um, you know, <laughs> do so at your own peril, perhaps. Um, I'll, I'll I'll jump in. I have a quick note. Um, props to fucking Nolan for including the IMAX ratio on the Blu-ray release here, and this yeah, is true for was, Rises too. That, that was super cool. I know people get distracted with kind of the constantly shifting ratios between when it's filmed with the IMAX camera versus when it's filmed with, you know, kind of traditional cameras. But if you filmed it that way, like put it out like that, you know, and it pisses me off that Marvel doesn't do that. I guess Disney doesn't do that with um, a lot of like, like the Russos have like Infinity War, for example, was shot entirely with IMAX cameras in the IMAX ratio. And, then and sh- it's cropped to, you know, a two thirty five one ratio for the Blu-ray. And it's just like, what the fuck? Like, That's you know. shitty. Anyway, so so like I said, props to Nolan. And, and obviously, Nolan is a stickler for, for kind of the maximum audiovisual experience. But, you know, you're a director. You should be, you know? It's so I think that's file, really yeah. cool. Although, I will... <sighs> I am, I mean, I, I, when it fills up your television set, it's very nice. It's a very beautiful movie. This one is too. Um, but the, the constant back and forth, I, it's, and maybe it wasn't, I don't, I don't recall being as distracted about it in the theaters, but I feel like it is, it's definitely distracting for sure. Well, you know, and there's a lot of moments of here's like a big kind of city panorama and then it goes to like a dialogue shot and it's kind of a hard cut. Um, but, they did better know, for it in Rises, though. Rises is definitely more consistent where they kind of tended to, to shoot a lot of the sequences, you know, they kind of block. At least the intro like of se- certain sequences with it, too. It's the same way with here. I mean, the, the whole bank robbery and the, in- and the entrance here is is fully IMAX. Oh, man. So, it's good, too. It's so good. So, yeah, actually, that's that's a good starting point, I think, is... You know, that's your introduction to Heath Ledger as the Joker. That's your introduction to this movie. And it really just fucking sets the stage in a big way. Um, I think it's definitely the best intro sequence in the trilogy. Um, and it's 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 beautifully realized in that that um, <laughs> in that IMAX format. And uh, it's so cool. You know, I remember didn't uh, didn't they put the I think I think they didn't I know they put out the the rises prologue as part of I think Mission Impossible but didn't they do the same thing for the Dark Knight at some point or am I making that yeah up? no 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 we went and saw it together somewhere I just don't remember what they did it, I saw rises of, but not not for this no we saw this at the beginning of a a, a thing God damn it what was it mm. See, probably look remember. it up I'm sure we could find it but um oh I am Legend I just found it that's it. <laughs> Oh, what a shit movie. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, it, you know, it It sets the stage in terms of, like, that's the type of movie this is going to be. It's an intense fucking movie. You know, you get that Zimmer score that just is just, you know, it, it just ratchets the tension up to fucking 11, man. And, you know, when it kind of pulls back from that and you get more into kind of the, the, you know, the scope of the movie, you know, we see... Bruce Wayne continuing to be Bruce Wayne. You know, it's cool to just kind of continue with this. You know, it, there's just there's just hype level to it. You know, we get introduced to Harvey Dent. You know, there's just so much in here to really kind of unpack, and it, a lot of it is just fucking fantastic. Yeah, man, this is an intense movie. Like from the score to to Heath Ledger, who. You know, in my opinion, this is the best performance in any superhero movie. Like every anytime I rewatch that, it's just it's just so gripping that you you focus on his every word and his every actions, and you know every time he's on the screen, he completely seals it. And he's he's just so terrifying because he he seems crazy, and you don't don't you don't know what he's gonna do. Um, and you know you're like, how is Batman gonna? stop this guy and he doesn't have any superpowers either like he's just a man without a plan like he's just out there he and you don't understand his motivation so this is such a good foil to to batman and you know just i love how this movie was done and the the intensity that it carries and just some scenes especially just you know what's coming but every time you rewatch it it's just so good. So tense. That whole interrogation scene 
Lord have mercy. Most recently, I saw a video. They were talking about just like more theories about the Joker, and someone had a theory that the the Joker was a, a CIA or some kind of used to be some like kind special of, forces or something. Yeah, the special force, but like professional interrogator. You know, and how he knew these these strategies, and how he just knows to manipulate people. Like when he when he's a captive in in that cell. He manipulates the the guard standing there, um, like angering him, taunting him about how he killed his friends and how they were cowards and to, you know, getting what he wants and getting free from the prison. Yeah. It's, yeah, I, I mean, that's not a bad theory. But I think, I think what I like about this Joker is that his origin is multiple choice, you know? Yeah. We we you know we see him kind of tell different versions of his. You know you want you want to know how I got these scars. You see that throughout, and I, I think that. Well, I think this is this is easily the best version of the Joker we've ever seen. Um, oh yeah. No disrespect to uh, Caesar Romero and his glorious mustache, and also no disrespect to Jared Leto's <laughs> brilliant Leto's. incarnation um, in Suicide Squad, but. This this is the gold standard. This is what you know. Every time you bring the Joker to 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 film, and you know, Joe Kwan, Joaquin Phoenix is up against this too. You have to you, you can't replicate this performance, and that's that's the problem. But you have you still have to live up to it in some way. You have to outmatch it. You know, you, you can't do the same thing. You, know, you got to do something else. Jared Leto did something else, which was fucking garbage. You know, but he did do something <laughs> he else. He tried. <laughs> So we we can say definitively that he did not do what Heath Ledger did, nor did he try to do it, and it didn't work out on either account. But every you know, just I mean, this is this is this is the Joker's movie, really. You know, when when you, when when you come down to it, which is why I think that I, I think that Batman takes a bit of a backseat in this movie and in the right in, in, in Rises as well. Um, but he's in there enough that it, it's not it's not really a problem, and it's also because the Joker is so fucking magnetic to watch that you don't mind. You know, you, you don't mind. You know, you're, you you want to see what the Joker is up to. You want to see what he's planning. You want to see how he's going to interact with someone. You want to see, you know, like from start to finish, you know, and that, and that's the beauty of this movie is it hooks you in from the beginning into the Joker. You know, he's got this, and, and this is another thing that when it kind of came out, people were apprehensive about was the Joker's design. You know, it's, a little bit non-traditional. He's certainly not as clean cut as, as a lot of uh, iterations of the Joker, um, you know, are, are in the comics, certainly. But he's supposed to be a crazy freaking dude. Exactly. And and the performance is so good that even if he had issues with it, and I don't, and, and a lot of it, again, too, was growing up with this and kind of having the reverence for it. And then, you know, this is, you kind of, you kind of just get used to it, honestly. Um, but it's, it's, it's all so good. Like there's, there's, so much to his performance there's so much uh, it's it's really a fucking shame that you know Heath Ledger you know passed away pretty much right after filming this because I I think a lot of people didn't give him credit um, prior to this movie for for being you know like a a great actor Um, but I think that this is his greatest performance uh, as an actor and it's one that you know he won an Oscar for it but I think it's one that will stand the test of time. I think it's probably going to be up there with the Darth Vader's as like this is yeah, one of the best sure. villains in cinematic history. And I don't, I don't think that's hyperbole to say that, is it? No, I, I personally don't think there we'll see a better version of the Joker. Um, but Joaquin Phoenix, you know, could prove us wrong. But I just, I just can't see someone getting to this level. Like this is just beyond anything we've seen any kind of superhero medium yeah and and, you know this is kind of one of the few examples in the superhero genre that it feels elevated above that you know usually kind of people throw those things into a pile and this is something that was vying for academy awards wasn't this nominated for best picture it didn't win but Uh, i'm pretty sure it was nominated uh, wasn't it sound sound, I, i think so which i mean not a lot of movies get nominated for Best Picture. And, you know, that's not to say that every movie that gets nominated always deserves it and every movie that ever wins it always deserves it either. But you got to do something right. You got to do a few things right to even get into that, you know, conversation. 
and this movie did a lot right, you know? Um, I, I think, it, you know, we, we've harped on, you know, the Joker, but, you know, again, I think... That is the high point of this movie, though. It, it is the high point, so obviously it merits so much of that conversation, but I think that there's a lot of good character work here, too. You know, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, Gary Oldman's Gordon gets a lot of great work here, too. We really haven't even talked about Harvey Dent, who, for my money, is fantastic. Aaron Eckhart mm-hmm. as Harvey Dent. and Crushed it. You know, he's... Uh, and again, I guess that's kind of the, the 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 downside of this kind of again not being the best Batman movie is that there's a lot of attention given to the other characters, but it's not it's not such a bad thing because they're given a lot of justice, you know, somewhat pun intended, I guess, with Harvey Dent, uh, you know, given he's the district attorney, but it's it's really fascinating again to watch kind of I guess the Joker's manipulation of Harvey Dent from Gotham's White Knight to Harvey Two-Face, you know, to to this very broken version of this character, this unhinged version of this character. Um, and, you know, a pretty faithful adaptation of the comic book character, certainly, again, more faithful, as we talked about with Tommy Lee Jones. Although, uh, as a side note, um, I'm a little disappointed that there wasn't a courtroom sequence in this that Batman appeared in in full costume <laughs> and then acid got thrown onto Harvey's face and he held up the, 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 f- the folder up to his face and created a perfect line, uh, <laughs> splitting his face. I don't understand why they didn't do, do that. Cause that was, that was probably the best part Pure of gold. Batman forever. But, uh, I, I get, I, you know, I, I digress, I suppose, but, uh, yeah, I, I you know, uh, I guess kind of a, a more broad look at this. Um, what are the things that stand out to you, you know, kind of beyond what we've already talked about um, and, and uh, any sort of other kind of things that come to mind when, when you think of the dark Knight, especially, you know, in light of your recent rewatch of it. Cinematography. Good call. Good call. It was, it was nominated for best cinematography, but it was actually not nominated for best picture that year. Okay. Well, it was, it was in the conversation, even if it didn't get yeah. nominated outright. For yeah. It. it won. Uh, it also won a uh, best sound editing. I could definitely see that. How about when they flip that freaking semi, man? Oh, yeah. Over its head over end. Head over end. What? Yeah, I guess maybe that's an appropriate way to say it. They flipped a semi. No, I don't need to say it again. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, that was incredible. (laughs) Yeah, Christopher Nolan really made good use of practical effects. Just, I think throughout the the trilogy, you know, and that that semi flip is, is incredible. I tell you what, um, I don't want to, maybe we shouldn't talk about it yet. My fate. You're going to go into favorite moments? Is that what's happening? I I, kind of want to talk about it just because we're talking about things that stand out. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Favorite moment in this movie. And this is, it's not, it's a non-Joker moment. um, But when I think of, it's actually when I think of the trilogy. It's kind of what I think of. Uh, Batman goes to the what the Philippines or Asia somewhere uh, to to get that dude Hong Kong no yeah he goes to Hong Kong that's it he goes to Hong Kong to get that guy and he he's got he it's like a whole fucking Batman thing you know he's got to have an excuse to go over there so what's he do he takes all the ballerinas over there right on the (laughs) boat and then he he hops he goes and he swims he jumps off the boat and goes over there to his giant plane that he just bought so he can be extracted with it later on in the in the scene and you have that whole batman sequence oh god and the score swells up it's so awesome he's shooting the explosives from across the way and it's all shot in imax and he's putting them on the window and then he jumps and he flies and it's got the it's got that cool it's got like that it's got the Batman fucking theme playing. Oh, I get so pumped up just thinking about it. And then he steals that guy, kicks all their asses, and then he drags that guy by his fucking foot. Just drags him through his building, and then and then blows up the thing, and then he's extracted with the CIA weather balloon shit. Oh, it's so cool. So freaking cool. Love it. Anyways, I'm sorry. I get it like I'm looking at my audio <laughs> spikes, and I can tell that I was obviously very excited <laughs> talking about it. But it's so fucking cool, man. That's my favorite. I, my favorite I mean, moment. you're you're not wrong. It's 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 pretty fucking cool. I I think that I think the action takes a good step forward compared to Begins. Personally, um, oh yeah, you know, and, and this is a longer movie, you know, and it's it's 
probably more of a crime movie than it is like an action movie, you know, it, but it has, it has its bits of action. You know, we get the uh, Batman in the beginning with, with the, the reappearance of Scarecrow. Um, I will add, you know, just kind of, again, you see Batman in action, kicking ass, using some, some gadgets hey, Batman, and stuff like that. What's the difference between you and me? I'm not wearing hockey pads. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> how about that? How about the fucking Italian guy? My dogs are hungry. That fucking dude. You know what I'm talking about? Chechen. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> Chechen. <laughs> Chechen. <laughs> the guy and his fucking dogs. <sighs> Anyways, I'm sorry. I gotta, I gotta get into the weeds again. That's right. You brought Batman back into the conversation, and for that, we appreciate you. <laughs> um, well, there's other action beats in here, I think, that are that are pretty good too. Um, it, well, you certainly you, you talked about. I think there was a semi that that flipped at some point. It sounded like you talked about that several times. So um, that was pretty cool. I, yeah. I think that bat pod. But the whole bat pod sequence is really fucking cool. Um, you know, another kind of vehicle chase. Kind of a mainstay, I guess, somewhat, and yeah, I, I guess in the you know this each each movie kind of has its own kind of uh, focal point for vehicles. So, you know, you got like the tumbler, got this big action piece and begins, and then you get the bat pod as kind of the centerpiece in this one, and then the bat, you know, the the flying thing. Uh, we get uh, a few sequences with it and rises, yeah. um, but I also really really enjoy um, the end when Batman's fighting all the SWAT team like you know yeah. basically jokers kind of rigged it so that the 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 hostages are wearing the joker yeah. mask and stuff like that and then he's got his fucking goggles yeah well <sighs> it, it, we see batman with the lenses which is really cool um you know the whole use of that kind of sonar tech was was really awesome although uh lucia's not on board but he was back on board by the end of it so everything's okay um the that whole sequence where basically you know, due to the way that that Joker's kind of rigged the situation, you see Batman just fucking going to town on SWAT. Like, there's the one moment where um, he basically kind of ties like all, you know a few of their feet together and like kind of kicks them out. And they, oh, I just kicked my trash can. You know, he kicks them out. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little overexcited myself. There might be some audio spikes for my uh, for my audio too. Yeah, love it. <laughs> Maybe. What did the Batman. movie get you so excited to where you actually had to like fucking fist pump and I was, kick I was shit? Acting, and... I was acting the fucking movie out for you guys, even though no one can see me i'm in a room that's with you know the door shut no one's watching this right i don't even have a camera set up so it's not like i can pretend that facebook or google spying on me right now um <laughs> but uh you know he kicks that out it's all it's also cool like I, I again i think that no one took a a good step forward with how the action was shot you know obviously the cinematography here as you mentioned is fucking phenomenal um it's, it's a lot of good stuff in here and the character work even if it's not as strong for Bruce Wayne himself, it's equally strong for the Joker, which is fascinating because he's a character that doesn't have, you know, he's he's just a he's an agent of chaos. He's a self-described agent of chaos. You know, he's just, he, you know, he's he's out to incite. He's a dog chasing a tire. He wouldn't you know, know what anarchy. To yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, it, like that's kind of his character, and to still have that work throughout two and a half hours of screen time is great. Whereas, you know, someone with Harvey Dent kind of has a more traditional fall from grace that's kind of depicted here. Yeah, man, like uh, I'm going to get overexcited if I start, start talking about more stuff with this movie. So, uh, uh, there's a, it's a multifaceted film with a lot of high points, man. It, yeah. It's, 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 it's really a good. Lot phenomenal. A lot of good things. A lot of good things. Uh, yeah. Like I'm sitting over here trying to think of my favorite quote and I honestly can't because I can think of like 10 right now that are like, I think this entire series is very quotable, but this movie in particular just has so many quotes from all different characters that are just, it's just so good. Either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. I think that's the big yeah. one. No, I was thinking of that one. Um, the one at the very end, you know, he's the, the hero that got the reserves, like, but not the one he needs right now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, Gordon's, Silent Guardian, Watchful Gordon's Protector, dialogue, a Dark, a dark Knight. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, like so good. Like so much Every, of that's which, good. I, I gotta say, like this is this is a credit to to Zimmer and Nolan, but. Every time these any of these movies ends, don't you just get fucking unreasonably hyped again? Yeah. Like just just the 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 score is just like 
Like, they God damn, explode. like, you just, we just want to suit up and go out and fight crime yourself sometimes, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> it's just like, instead of just ending, you know, like, on, not, not downward in a, in a negative sense, but, you know, just kind of, like, calming everything down. As soon as, like, that starts going out, he just kind of starts to pick it back up, both in the score and, you know, building up the story of, like, the future of the franchise that it just gets you so excited. Let me ask you guys something. Uh, and this is this might be getting off in the weeds a little bit. Um, have you ever listened to the song while you drive, the, the the score while you drive? Oh, I'm sure. You gotta do it at night, though. Yeah, no, you do it at night on the interstate. You do it at night on the interstate, and you kind of go a little faster than you should. It's the I, I've experienced a similar <laughs> thing with Contact by Daft Punk. It has oh, like yeah. that's a song that just. You know, you're like you're just you're just normal. Everything's normal, and then it's suddenly, boom, boom. <laughs> suddenly, you know, you're, it's pedal to the metal. Like something, something happened. Like there's just a disconnect. Like it just forces your 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 feet just down ever so slightly. Yeah, so, and it feels yeah. like you're driving the tumbler, and you go real fucking fast. Like, yeah. Save all, all lives all over in downtown off, Tampa. You know, yeah. you just all of a sudden you turn off your lights, and then you like start switching lanes like crazy, <laughs> and the cops start chasing you, and you just evade them, and you jump through a waterfall. And then you get a ticket for reckless driving, you know? That's, <laughs> not if you don't uh, get caught. Happens. Not if you jump through a waterfall. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. No. Don't get caught. That's fine. <laughs> I, never turned off, I never turned off my headlights, but... Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> quite unsafe. That's don't good. do that. <laughs> really good movie, man. Yeah. Really, really good, good movie. Um, yeah, so last, last bits of uh, things that I have on my list. What do you guys think about the costume here compared to the Batman Begins costume? Can we get a quick poll going here? Um... Which one? Which one do you guys prefer? I, I like the functionality of this suit. It makes a lot more sense. Um, but I, cosmetically, I always thought it felt it looked a little funny. Yeah, I think especially the legs because it's just like yeah. a bunch of pieces. You know, I don't know. It's never yeah. The look of it's never quite gelled for me. Like it always, it feels a little busy, a little over designed. Although I think the cowl it, itself is definitely a. Uh, a big improvement where, you know, his, his neck isn't too puffy, you know, he, he right. looks, like he could definitely like if, move his neck. If Batman needed a, like a functional suit of armor, I think this would be something that he would wear, mm. but I don't, I don't necessarily think it looks like you said, I don't think it looks good. Now in the middle of the night, if you're a bad guy and you know, you're not, you know, it's pretty fucking scary, but, um, you know, you see it, you see just, see like a promo shot of him i think it looks kind of looks kind of weird but it looks very opinion. tactical or functional and maybe even a little more on the realistic side which i don't necessarily want in a in a batman costume yeah i'm in the begins camp but i, I do think i think the suit looks fine at night when it's you know mostly in the dark unfortunately rises it's there's you know the whole basically third act takes place during the daytime and i think that really kind of highlights um how it doesn't look quite right, but could be worse. Could be nipples on it, man. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, well, uh, quick shout out. Um, this is kind of not really related to the movie itself, um, but uh, I would urge our listeners, if they're not familiar with either of these things that I'm about to talk about, to look them up on YouTube. First of which is The Tangerine Night, which is one of the best <laughs> videos on YouTube. Bar none. <laughs> if you don't know it's anything about it, hear. again, it's all I could just, hear just look it up. I saw a bandit the size of a tangerine. I don't know who, <laughs> how someone came up with that, but it's so good. Um, and I would also recommend uh, people watch uh, Tommy Wiseau's uh, interpretation of the Joker um, from The Dark Knight. Henry and I watched this uh, <laughs> very recently, and um, that was the first time uh, I saw it. If it, if it anyone me. if you don't know who Tommy Wiseau is, he is the uh, writer, director, and star of The Room, uh, the masterpiece that um, the disaster artist uh, was was made about. But uh, I think I think you guys should 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 watch it. I think you'll appreciate it. Agreed. Do it. Um, all right. So, uh, well, it, do you think it's a good time to invite Batman back in here? Uh, yeah. What's Batman's favorite moment in this movie? Uh, well, what do, you, what, do you, what do you think, Batman? Uh, do you have some some dialogue you'd like to share? The city just showed you, and it's full of people ready to believe in good. It's pretty good, Batman. 
And I appreciate that because it ties into what my favorite moment of the movie is. So Andrew already talked about his, so we needn't ask him uh, again. Um, I'll say my favorite moment is the last um, conversation that Batman and the Joker have when the Joker is strung upside down, you know, the the madness, as you know, is like gravity. All it takes is a little push. That whole, it's, it's, I mean, obviously the interrogation sequence is kind of, you know, the, the moment we think of maybe when Batman and Joker have their interactions, like that's, that's, but for me, like that is the pitch perfect realization of the Batman Joker relationship. Like you can't, you, you can't top that for me. And unfortunately, you know, it's, it's, it's not the last frame of Heath Ledger that we ever see. He did, you know, appear in uh, the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus um, in part, um, which he had partially filmed before he passed away. But as kind of like the last moment of like this completed work that Heath Ledger did, like it's just a testament to his performance and testament to everything that he gave for this role. And um, it's, it's a beautiful moment in this movie. I think that, you know, it has that kind of, special meaning beyond just the circumstances of the film itself, but in the context of the film itself, fucking perfect encapsulation of that Batman joke relationship, you know, destined to do this forever. Fucking, fucking good, man. Uh, Henry, really good. what do you think? Oh yeah, no. Um, my favorite quote is one that I don't know if it actually makes sense if you think about it, but when Harvey Dent is saying that the night is darkest just before the dawn, you know, and, and I promise you the dawn is coming. I don't, I feel like that's not actually true, like in real life, but it's, <laughs> it's a good metaphor. So I, I like to think about it and, and use it, you know, and when things are really d- bad or really dark, you know, it's you know, maybe the dawn's coming up, but I, trying to pick a favorite moment is hard. So I think I'll just shout out two moments that I really enjoyed in the movie. One Batman moment, one, um joker moment the batman one is the the hong kong sequence that we talked about just yeah so cool. that you know like him jumping off a building to another building with his cape lighter is insane and then the i don't think we mentioned the that joker that famous scene where he does the he goes to meet the the gangster mob you know, and introduces himself to them for the first time and and does a magic trick. Yeah, you know, makes that, 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 that's just yeah. such a such a such a classic scene, you know. But yeah. th- those are my two picks, I'll say. Yeah. Yeah, and another classic scene is uh why so serious. Got to get it in there somewhere, right? <laughs> uh all right, uh, shall we move on to the conclusion to the Dark Knight trilogy? Yes. All right, The Dark Knight Rises, July 20th, 2012, written by Jonathan Nolan and Christopher Nolan, directed by Christopher Nolan, Christian Bale, Michael Caine, Gary Oldman, Morgan Freeman, all back. And we got more newcomers, Anne Hathaway as Selena Kyle slash Catwoman, Tom Hardy as Bird, uh, Marion Cotillard as, uh, we're in spoilers, right, uh, uh, Miranda Tate slash Talia Al Ghul, and then Joseph Gordon Levitt as Robin John Blake. The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, eight years after the Joker's reign of anarchy, Batman is forced out of exile to save Gotham City, now on the brink of total annihilation at the hands of the brutal guerrilla terrorist Burn. I'm, I'm, I'm laying down the law. Every time someone says Burn, you have to say it in that exact. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You guys can do what you want. <laughs> and, they, and they have to do the Bane rap afterwards. I'm Bane. That's my name. <laughs> Bruce Wayne and Batman are totally the same. Uh, that's another recommended uh, video for anyone uh, yeah, listening. Uh, o- oral Knots. Uh, search, I think, just Oral Knots Bane. Strawberries are packed with fiber. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those are so good and so convincing that I forgot they were actually in the movie. And then I'm like, wait, he didn't ask him about his breakfast. And I was like, oh, that's not, that's not in the movie. You know what I see when I look at you? A bag of cream cheese. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are I, I never looked at these videos. I need to look them up. 
you, if you haven't seen it you, or you don't remember, you should definitely listen. Yeah, well, while, while we're on the subject, um, also look for Badman, uh, B-A-D-M-A-N oh, yes. from College Humor. Uh, Pete Holmes' Batman is one of my favorite uh, interpretations of the the Bale voice. Uh, it, it actually, it's it. I think it is my favorite. He he is phenomenal in those. So uh, get on that, uh, and we're gonna get on the Dark Knight Rises seriously discussing Burn and and everything that that uh, comes along with this movie. What do you guys think? How about that opening sequence? Have we stopped at the fire? Yeah, that, that's uh, the fire I rises. That there we go. No. Well, come on, someone's got to help me out. I can't just do the Bane voice. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm not going to do impressions. <laughs> just embarrass myself. <laughs> so yeah, opening sequence. You, you you like it? Sounds like. Yeah, I mean, my first uh, my first uh, uh, exposure to that was uh, in the IMAX dome, and it was nauseating. It was terrible. Um, but. It was, uh, you know, you watch it, you watch it on flat screen as it's, you know, intended to be viewed, and it's pretty outstanding. Um, they chopped the the set pieces throughout this entire series are ridiculous. They're so good, um, and the way that they're filmed, I mean, they they, they blow the the what the the whole front end and the back end of a plane off, and they just leave that that fuselage. Is yep. that what happens? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it it's really fucking cool man it's really cool and then bane that's your first that's your f- bane or however the fuck you guys say it I, i'm not cool <laughs> like you guys but um yeah it's your first uh it's your first time you see him and he's he's a total badass it's really I cool splurred. i'm really jealous of With his, no survivals of his uh phlebotomy skills He's just drawing blood from the scientist <laughs> while the plane's falling. I was like, God damn, I have a hard time doing this just like not on the plane. Uh, that was a class in the League of Shadows. So mm. I need to take that class. Well, Batman blew him up, so too late. Damn. Actually. Well, Batman did not blow him up. Well, what? Well, Batman didn't blow him up. Yeah, he blew well, the League of Shadows up, but uh, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Blew them up, I guess. Okay. Okay. I all right. <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think uh, I think that this movie's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a movie. Yeah, it's I, not. No, I don't want to. I, I don't want to say it's like good. that. No, it's better I, than I a think movie. It's good. Yeah. I, think I think it's, it's good. Good. I think it's a good movie. I, I think it's the worst. I think it's the worst in the trilogy. I also think it's the worst depiction of Batman in the sense that there's about. 10 minutes of Batman screen time, which is yeah, there's just not enough Batman. disappointing for a movie that is damn near three hours long. And I think that that kind of t- strikes it. My probably central issue with this movie is that it's just too long for what the story is trying to tell. And I, I, I really, really enjoy the story of this movie. I think it's got some of the strongest ideas in the franchise. And I think it does, I think it has the potential to do some of the strongest character work in the franchise. Um, certainly for like, you know, for Bruce Wayne, for Batman, like it's, it's definitely a more personal story than the dark Knight was. It's, it's closer in, you know, to Batman begins and obviously going back to the league of shadows. Well, to, you know, Ra's al Ghul and his continuing influence and Talia coming in, you know, there's a lot of through line from Batman begins. And I think that that just naturally makes for a more personal story but I just think that this movie is just a little too long in, in parts and it kind of has too many things. I think that it's kind of tracking that space, the story out in a way that the flow isn't cohesive in the way that it really needs to be. Like, I feel like, you know, Batman, you know, getting broken by Bane. Uh, sorry. Incredible. Bird. Um, you know, like fucking phenomenal moment. But then it takes about an hour of like the movie for, you know, there's like it's like it's like 15 minutes between every time we see Bruce Wayne and I'm like that's just not enough time like these other characters don't work well enough to justify that lack of attention given to its main character you know it's the the, the titular character it, it, but at the same time the whole concept of you know holy shit they actually went through with the nightfall thing of you know Bane breaking his back 100% never expected to see that in a film no, you know cuz I'm just like it, well, well how do you how do you get out of that? Like, how do you how do you reverse that? You know, it's it's the, the first time it happened. Oh my god! Do you remember yeah. how oh, it blew you away? 
it did. blew me away. It, I mean, it, you know? it left you speechless because again, you're like, well, they they can't do that. It's it's the Avengers thing of well, they can't do the snap because how do you how do you undo that? We still don't know how they're going to undo that. So I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm anxiously, you know, anticipating how the fuck they resolve that situation. And this one was kind of left in a similar precarious situation of okay, now how do you have a Batman with a broken back and still have half a movie, you know, after that and end it in a I satisfying manner. I don't want to. I don't want to cut you off, no, but I really, really Go like ahead. how they metaphorically handled the Lazarus Pit. Right, and and that's kind of what I'm striking at is, I fucking love that idea. Yeah, I just think that it's almost a little sloppy in that it just takes so long for that to happen. And I think that in like a TV show, you could get away with something like that. You know, kind of take Batman out of it. But when this is the trilogy, and you know, this is the conclusion to your big trilogy, it's like. You take Batman out of there for the last kind of 45 minutes until the last kind of very conclusion to, you know, the, the bomb about to go off. It, 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 I guess it makes you want for Batman to come back, but it also was, for me, it was kind of situation. I'm like, uh, I don't know that I totally buy into this idea of Bruce Wayne kind of recovering by standing up for a long time and then climbing out of the, the well, you know, like 10 (laughs) minutes later, like it's, it's, it has to be accelerated by the very nature of what it was trying to do. And and I think that the, the passage of time isn't super clearly conveyed. I mean, you know, they talk about like the cops have been trapped underground for like two months just chilling. I'm like, that's a pretty big fucking deal. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I, I just think that there's some stuff with the storytelling. It's a little wonky. And I think that if they maybe pulled back on certain elements, you know, the whole thing with the cops underground, I mean, I guess they kind of needed it to have, Bane's kind of revolution be successful to the degree that it is. I just kind of felt like there's ways to tell kind of the ideas of the story, like what you're talking about, like this, this basically grounded interpretation of the Lazarus pit of Bruce Wayne of Batman's rebirth, fucking really, really cool idea, but it just didn't quite land. I think in the way that was intended in the way that I really wanted it to that particular part of it. There are things in this movie that really, really landed strongly with me and I'll, I'll get into that, but uh, I, I know I'm getting rambly now. So um, if you guys want to talk about anything I just talked about, feel free. Otherwise pull it in a completely different direction. Also very cool. Batman got really good physical therapy down in the Lazarus, but you know, you punch that bitch in the back. Boom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I actually like the the fighting and um, some of the action, like hand to hand combat in this one, uh, better than the previous two. I think it's still on the slightly, I would say, one of the more weaker elements of the the series. Is just Batman's fight. I like I like how practical it is with them. Um, I forget the style that it's called, but it uses a lot of elbows and knees. Um, but it's it's not as acrobatic and and flashy and as like the the video games and even as the the atflack batman uh but i i do like the his combat scenes with bane a whole lot it just shows you how when how brooding how big bane is and tom hardy got for that role and just you know how much pain he puts batman in and just both of the fights even you know the the fight where he doesn't come out on top, and they're really cool characters. I don't mean to talk about metaphor, the metaphorically speaking. I, I think it's the second time I've dropped that shit this podcast, but um, you know they're both. They, you got um, Batman or Bruce Wayne doesn't have any cartilage in any of his joints. His body's been abused. He's in significant pain, um, and then at the same time you got Tom Hardy. You know Bane. He's he's he has to wear a mask to. To keep his pain at bay, you know, and and I think we're gonna talk about my favorite sequence again. I'm gonna get into it again. I'm just <laughs> blown right, by. Go, I can't. For it, I, man. I can't help but talk about it. Um, Batman comes out of that Lazarus pit and then goes to liberate Gotham, and he, uh, you know, he picks that fight back up with Bane, but now he knows to target the mask, and he targets that mask and starts ripping it apart, and Bane gets pissed. He ah, just go, fucking goes oh, to town man. on the column, man. Yes, he just, I mean, he, it, and it was, 
I remember the first time I saw it, and I saw it this time again, and um, and at this point, I think I was kind of buzzed when I watched this part again. Um, and <laughs> I'm three hours later, here. I'm feeling pretty bu- I'm feeling pretty good after I you know after a three hour movie. And Bane goes to I mean he's just he, you're sincerely a little bit worried about Batman because the guy's punching holes in pillars, you know. <laughs> um, and uh, and it just that ferocity that you get, you know, because before that, you have Bane and he's all about control. Everything that he does, he's in such control. And when that control's pulled away and he doesn't and he starts to feel he starts to feel something again and it's and somebody else is starting to ma- manipulate him. He gets pissed. Um and um yeah, and it's 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 a powerful moment, I think. It's really good. Um but that's one uh, you get past the first movie, um and both uh, in the trilogy anyways and both of these sequels have incredibly strong villains i really like the villains in these movies i think they're probably one of my favorite villains in superhero movies period i really like bane i really like him a whole lot and talia is uh deeply conniving and manipulative and i think that's pretty cool too um the score in this film um is is pretty outstanding I like that a whole lot, and I do like, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I do like where this film ends. I like where it leaves it, uh, and it leaves me wishing there was a fourth movie, um, but that's just me. An interesting thought, an interesting thought indeed. Um, I, I think uh, I think there is a lot to like in this movie. Again, you know, I, I kind of begrudge it for some sloppy execution of things and wasting its time with things that don't need to be wasted on i don't i don't know how to phrase that sentence but like who gives a shit about that other cop who the fuck that, is that other that cop? is exactly what i'm talking about like there's a <laughs> lot of screen time given to him and it's just kind of like this is an easy like five to ten minutes you could cut from this movie like basically his entire role could be stripped from this movie and yeah, absorbed into another fuck? character and they show him dead laying there on the street after he got blown apart by the tumbler thing and, and it's like i don't give a shit he was a fucking asshole anyways well, i don't care yeah i i yeah. just kind of <laughs> That, that to me, it was like, this movie is almost three hours long, and it's just like, uh, look, you know, it, it's it's one thing to, to you know, have, have a real a vision, and it takes three hours, you know, like, for me, like, Blade Runner 2049 was a movie that, like, it, it was justified in being so long. This one, to me, felt like it was just a little self-indulgence on the part of Nolan, where it's just like, you can look for things in this to tighten this movie up. You can tighten this movie up, and I think you have a better experience overall. And uh, that's that's like the, the first thing that I would look to of like, uh, you know, sorry Matthew Modine, you'll you'll just have to survive with Stranger Things, because <laughs> that that whole role could have been lost in its entirety, and and I don't think you lose anything of value from this movie. No, the movie would have been stronger without it. Personally, in my yeah, opinion, yeah, and, and, you know, and you know, there's other ways to tighten the movie up, but that's that's the one that that I'm glad you pointed out because that was the most glaring example. Especially rewatching it this time, I'm just like. Why is this uh, character there? You know, right? Like you, the 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 relationship between Gordon and Robin, I thought was pretty cool. It's pretty compelling. You know, you got this young hotshot cop who gets elevated to to detective while Gordon's in the hospital. I, yeah, I think well, I kind of like that aspect. He's actually a hothead cop, as you know, um, mm. as Matthew Modine's character. Somebody get this hothead out of here! Yeah, he's <laughs> like, that what? He suddenly said like one line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know and it's like too. oh he quit he quit the force to stay home with his wife and then gordon goes out of his way to go get him what the fuck leave that bitch at home he hasn't done anything you know but anyways yeah. i, I yeah. Nah, yeah yeah i'm gonna say we're we're, we're we're getting into the weeds with 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 that sort of thing uh I'll, I'll talk i'll talk about some of the other characters that were introduced we talked about bane talked a little bit about talia we haven't really talked about Catwoman. yeah uh S- selena kyle Anne hathaway uh definitely uh kind of a, 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 a well definitely a different take on the character i would say um but i felt like uh i i really enjoy anne hathaway in this movie am i am i alone in saying that no i liked her i still had a little bit of time a hard time like seeing her pass um i guess maybe some of her previous roles and like seeing her as like a purely like good character um not necessarily saying that selena kyle is is bad per se but she's you know she's 
a little more in the gray. Yeah, I, I think, again, this kind of speaks to what I was kind of talking about with, you know, the idea of, you know, Bruce Wayne being reborn. I liked the end point of, you know, kind of having, you know, Bruce and Selina kind of together. But I felt like that wasn't really earned throughout the movie. Like, she's mostly just an asshole to him. And, I, you know, I get it. People go for that sort of thing. Um, but it didn't really, you know, like, you know, there's a lot of talking about Bruce's, like, you know, there's more to you, you know. And I was like, yeah, that's cool and all. But I didn't really feel it was justified, you know, for him to kind of be like, she's the one for me. You know, she is the one that, that like, makes me hang up the cowl, you know, and, and, you know, give up all, you know, all this crusade to someone, you know, this protege that I found. I didn't, I didn't really totally buy that. Like, I, I liked it as an end point. I felt like it was strong, but I just didn't feel like, especially rewatching it, that it was earned throughout the, the, the scope of the movie. Like, yeah, she does redeem herself by the end and kind of, she kills Bane, you know, you know, she based, she, she literally saves Batman by the end, which, which is all cool. But I just kind of felt like there wasn't enough in the movie itself to really kind of make that moment again, pay off in the way that I think that they wanted it to like, it, like it's almost like a lot of the things here were like scripted in a way that like we start here, we end here. Uh, we don't really know what's going to happen in between it, you know, and they kind of just, threw some stuff together and it didn't quite feel as realized yeah, as a I lot didn't. of the stuff in the previous movies. I didn't find her character completely convincing. Um, she's better than Rachel, I will say. She's better than Rachel. I will agree. I don't care for Rachel in the other two movies. She's a much better foil that, for, for Batman and I can kind of I mean... I would agree Batman, with that. Even Batman in the comics is kind of a he's kind of a weird fucker in the sense that he's just like, you know, here's this cat burglar that kind of stands for everything that I, you know, stand for, but kind of like it you know like that man's always kind of had that sort of you know viewpoint to him um but he yeah, fell for yeah, talia it, 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 yeah i mean batman gets yeah. some ass in this movie yeah. let's say he has a well he has a kid with talia uh <laughs> i guess depending on which um comic you look at that could have been consensual and not consensual but they didn't they didn't quite go that route he does batman he does, rapes talia what uh no the other way around but Oh, does she? Yeah, I think, I think she drugs him. A... Yeah, I, I, I well, see. I think that <laughs> I think that wasn't originally written as that, and then it was retconned to be that, and then it was retconned again to not be that because Damian Wayne is who's now like I think he's he's still Robin in the comics. That's that's his and Talia's kid. But anyway, comics it doesn't it doesn't matter. You know the, the continuity is all sorts of wackadoodle do yeah. so. Um, well, yeah, anyway, back to I the just movie. Don't, I just don't think, and like I said, I don't find her character completely compelling. I tell you what, though, um, the emotional response to to after Batman goes and drives that bomb over over the ocean, uh, it's that's incredibly compelling. Um, that was very sad. It's a very sad thing, um, and I got I got a little emotional at the end of that movie. It's really good, really good because you you know you're you grind out these three movies and you see the investment in all the characters and stuff and then you see Batman. And there's no Batman. There's no Bruce, and it's super fucking sad, man. It's really, really powerful. Yeah, I, I kind of uh, not entirely, but I I kind of wished that um, Batman would have died at the end of the movie. And I remember the first time I watched it, I actually missed the bit where they said that the autopilot got fixed. So I assume that he did. Plus there, there's just like some weird logistics behind like how he ejected and like when he ejected and how he got far enough away and like swam away. But aside from that, I, I would like to think that the movie is just edited in a way to mislead you and Batman pretty much bailed before it ever reached the yeah, ocean. Yeah, Definitely. Because there is a shot, like, of, you know, kind of look, you know, as Batman looking pensive and all. But I, I think that that's just kind of a trick of the edit, which is kind of bullshit if you're trying to tell a story like that. But again, had it had a starting point, had an end point, middle, eh, whatever, we'll figure it out. It's kind and of I like all the it. little, I like all the little, little tidbits of joy everybody finds when, when they get the little clues that maybe Batman isn't dead. You know, like uh, Gordon goes up to the top and sees that the back sitting was repaired and, you, you, of course, Alfred's response to him sitting at the at the table over there. Alfred, goddamn Alfred, man! Oh, he was so sad, and he's I'm sorry, Bruce, I failed you. Oh, it was so sad. 
But then he looks so happy when he sees him at that restaurant. It's so good. It's heartwarming. It's really, <laughs> really awesome. Ah. <sighs> Michael Caine's probably one of my favorite characters throughout this. My, no, he's not a character. Michael Caine's a real person. <laughs> Alfred, Alfred's probably one of my favorite characters throughout this trilogy, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Can't argue with that. Yeah, Alfred's a good emotional backbone to the to the whole trilogy. He just, you know, and then in the end, kind of bring back... Like, I, I do like how they went back and recycled some... I guess themes from previously where the one in particular too with uh, Gordon where he wants to know who the Batman is and he just Batman just tells him about the the police officer who put a coat on this little kid and comforted him and he's like Bruce Wayne god damn you know man Gordon you got a one hell of a memory that's crazy yeah but he's also a terrible detective that you couldn't <laughs> he was like the only one like everyone <laughs> knew that Bruce Wayne is Batman, like whole League of Shadows, obviously, <laughs> but like um, Talia and like Bane Robin knew it. And Robin knew it right away. <laughs> and Commissioner Gordon. I just looked at your eyes and I knew <laughs> you were Batman. I looked at them for years and just no clue. <laughs> I looked at you smiling and I saw. I figured out you were Batman. All right, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> good for you. <laughs> I like uh, Bruce should have been like, I'm sorry, what? You you looked at the mirror and figured out that I'm Batman. All right, uh, yeah, prove it. I was like when Alfred said in the second movie, uh, or not, uh, not Alfred Lucius. He says, uh, "So you're 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 telling me that you think your boss <laughs> kicks ass in the middle of the night and you want to blackmail this person? That's good. <laughs> There's really good sequences in all these movies, yeah. man. Yeah, Morgan Freeman's really good in all all three of these, and I just yeah, I just love how he." D- you know, even when Batman's retired, he's like, you know, why don't I show you some some stuff I've been working on just for old time's sake? You know, and you're like, all right, like, let's see some, some bat gear. That's pretty cool. And we got the bat. Yeah. We did get the bat. This isn't a car. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, um, I thought it was a little corny when him and Selena are kicking ass up there on the top of that building. And they jump in there, but just before he says this is in a car, I thought that was a little corny. I like, I like, uh, I like when she disappears and he's all like, well, "Hold on, you bat- Batman, you do the honors. I don't want to, I don't want to imitate you and, and then take your, <laughs> take your, your spotlight." So that's what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> I also like how Batman at times keep using keeps using his Batman voice, even though he's with people who know he's Bruce Wayne. <laughs> I just, that's, I just yeah, that's true. Some of those, some yeah. those parts of music. Still, still, still a good movie. It, it's good. good. Movie. Uh, you know, it seems like a, I've probably spent a decent amount of time kind of picking apart some things that I didn't like. It's good that you can actually verbalize what you don't like about this movie because I know it's the weakest movie out of the three, and there are a lot of things that I don't like about this movie, but I can't exactly tell you why. I don't think it's the best one. Uh, again, I, I think that it has just really, really strong ideas that aren't executed with the sort of care and attention that was given in the first two movies. Um, and I think that, uh, and, I mean, I can't, you know, it's four years between Dark Knight and, and, and Rises. I, I, I feel like it's not a question of more time. I just think maybe like another pass of the script or something like that. Like it didn't seem like the story was quite where it needed to be by the time they got around to actually making it. And I think that with a little bit of, you know, work, I think that it really could have been something just as good as the other two as it stands for me it's a it's a step down i don't think it's like a massive step down or anything like that again i think this is a pretty good movie um i just wish it was better and, and if nothing else i think at in its current form it, even if it was 15 minutes shorter i actually think that would probably help just the pace of it a lot but you know we got what we got and we gotta live with it you know yeah I think it just had so much potential too, you know, like you're saying, and coming off the dark night, you, you're expecting, your expectations are so high of, of a Batman movie. And even though Bane was a good villain, like it's you coming from Heath Ledger's Joker and it's, it's hard to live up to that. Even still, I mean, there's, I, I mean, yes, the dark night was a, an incredible step up. Um, I would have been, I would have been very content with all these, like you said, Colton, that there's a lot of really good ideas that, um, that are just, that they feel like almost like half measures, you know, they're just not fully, fully exposed or, 
or there's just too much in there. So yeah, I mean, I guess fully exposed and not being able to shed enough light on one idea or another, you know, it just feels like maybe they just packed it full of too much. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, on the one hand, yeah, it could have been better. On the other hand, things haven't gotten much better at DC since. So yeah. <laughs> when you, when you go back and rewatch it, you're like, you know, things. I guess it we really had, we wasn't had, that bad. We had things pretty good, didn't we? <laughs> Uh, so, um, I'm going to, I'm going to invite Batman in, uh, just, just to, just to, to let, you know, let him fill us in on what his favorite line of dialogue, uh, is from this movie, what, what he really enjoyed do, doing in this movie. And, um, what, c- come on. Yep. Come on. Yep. yep er, come on. Where's the trigger? Where is it? You didn't give it to an ordinary citizen. Where's the trigger? <laughs> it's pretty intense. Fucking it's pretty intense. <laughs> God damn. That man does not fuck around. And then you have my permission to die. And you have my permission to die. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> uh, my Batman's uh, got right, fucking so, throat cancer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I might. I might not feel. So, I mean, I mean, Batman might not feel so good uh, in the morning tomorrow. Um, Andrew, you already said your favorite moment, right? Didn't, yeah, can you get to it pretty early on? Well, I if I I can elaborate on it. Um, so I, my favorite my favorite little snippet there is when Bane gets unhinged. But I think my favorite sequence is the Lazarus Pit. I really like the whole concept, and I like I like what they did there from the from the point it break he breaks his back to the point where he is reborn within the Lazarus Pit. I I think that's uh, I think that's really good. It's probably my favorite like series of things that happened to Batman. It's probably okay. my favorite. Right. Henry, uh, what are your thoughts? Favorite moment? Favorite moment I would give to the the first Batman and Bane fight sequence, and you just see Batman completely or get yeah Batman get completely demolished by Bane. Like every trick that he pulls, you know, Bane Bane seen before. And in fact, Bane's better at it. And, and it just be so much more physical and it's it's such a brutal scene and then it, it just ends on such a dour note with his back getting broken and getting sent off to Lazarus Pit well you know and the yeah that leads to my favorite quote too which is the burden is uh when he's when he's talking about your your punishment must be more severe and he wants to torture him not f- just physically but uh, your soul like, yeah like psychologically and then he gets up and he pushes him down on his chest and just fucks him up a little bit more <laughs> yeah just steps like Bane, on him. you're just being an asshole man what are you doing <laughs> he just broke this dude's back yeah, uh, this actually reminded me. Did you guys feel that um, the whole reveal with Talia and, um, you know, Bane as kind of her protector, do you felt like that undercut Bane as a character at all? I felt like the reveal was kind of just, it never was like a giant shocker. It was just kind of, yeah, okay. Eh, yeah, okay, yeah, all right, sense. whatever, you know? Uh, it didn't feel like a very earned, like, super big plot twist or anything. I just didn't really care. Um, yeah, and, and I, I will say, uh, certainly on my behalf, there was rampant speculation that Talia would be part of this movie, and then when Marianne Cotillard got cast, it was kind of like, yeah, that's probably her. And then I think the the child actress uh, basically said as much in an interview like a month ahead of the movie coming out that she's playing like the child version of Talia. So everyone's just like, <laughs> of all the candidates in this cast, who could it be? Could it be this made up character for the movie ding 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 yeah it was kind of like eh okay um shout out to her death scene by the way still fantastic uh glad glad the nolan ended with that take uh, and called it a day uh exceptional work um yeah i i i don't know that yeah I, I mean to answer my own question i don't know that it really undercut bane as a character but it definitely yeah, it it, it kind of just it just doesn't it didn't totally land. Again, that was another end point that I'm like, yeah, okay, like he could have had, you know, her literally and figure, fig, uh, figuratively twisting the knife there as kind of like a holy shit kind of moment, but it ended up kind of just being like a, okay, you know, all right, you know, it doesn't really change anything. You know, it's not doesn't doesn't 
both know I have to kill you now. You have to imagine the heat. <laughs> that's that's pretty pretty cool moment. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. You'll just have to imagine the fire. Yeah, that's it. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, my favorite moment. Um, it, it might it might be that that Batman Bane confrontation in the sewers. The sound design in there is fucking awesome. Like that's one of the few moments in this trilogy i think that basically has no score attached to it and it's just bane just kicking the living shit out of batman it's pretty and awesome it's just it's just an intense fucking moment and you know when it bane fucking picks him up and fucking snaps his back you're just like holy fuck you know especially you know you guys talked about it the first time it was just like what what the fuck like what, what, what do you do now what do you do now um but i think that um my favorite moment and especially as kind of this conclusion to the trilogy is that ending montage. Andrew, I know you mentioned you liked it and uh, I was playing a little coy because I think that it really, really, I don't know that I needed a fourth movie, as you mentioned, but I think that it really kind of ties everything into a pretty nice bow without being too, too, I mean, it's a, it's a little, um, I don't know that. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a happy ending overall, but I feel like it's an ending that's earned and, and it still makes sense for the most part. Um, as a conclusion to the trilogy and again kind of the individual beats of that like you know bruce particularly with selena i didn't think was earned but bruce kind of being happy away from you know basically hanging up the cowl as batman like that's kind of what a lot of the trilogy was about so i felt like that was a really good character moment for for bruce if nothing else from that perspective and then alfred kind of sitting on the other side of the table is you know seeing that you know bruce has kind of finally He's you moved know on. He's moved on. Like, that's a really, really great moment between those two characters. And I thought that... Um, and it makes the Lazarus Pit scene that much more potent. He was reborn when he left that fucking pit. You yeah. Know? And, and, you know, and the, and the little moment with Gordon seeing the, you know, the, the bat signal was a nice moment. Lucius with the autopilot, just kind of a nice recognition. But I think yeah. the, the decision to end this movie with, with John Blake, basically, awesome. you know, discovering the bat cave... And, you know, it's it's this universe's version of Robin. You know, obviously he's not going to go out and fight crime as Robin because if you're fighting crime as your first name, not a good look. <laughs> People will probably figure out who you are pretty easily. But, you know, I, I, I've i always interpreted this as this is, you know, he is the new Batman. You know, Batman was always a symbol. You know, it wasn't meant to be just one man. It was, you know, and, and we kind of saw shades of that in the Dark Knight with the, the hockey pad copycats, you know. You know, what gives you the right? You know, and, and I think that, you know, Batman himself, you know, Bruce Wayne himself has, has moved beyond it and realized that this is no longer who's crusade, but there's still a need for a Batman. And I, I thought as a, like a kind of symbolic moment of the completion of his journey and the continuation of the Batman, I was just like, as a trilogy, as the ending of that trilogy, just really, really good. Like, a, like it, it ends in such a good spot. I would watch a fourth movie. I mean, at this point, I don't think it's going to happen. Although maybe DC should reconsider making a fourth movie here and, <laughs> and, and going back to the well. They're like, shit, we fucked everything else up after this. Let's uh, let's go back to what worked. Um, but I think it's I think it's a really good moment, um, and uh, I think it's a really good trilogy um, to, to to talk about it overall. It's definitely one of um, the best. I think definitely, yeah. I mean, obviously, it has somewhat of the third movie kind of being the worst in the trilogy but it's still it's not it's not like the the third is a bad movie it's got I, again, high, I think it's, it's a good really movie I, I just think it's a step down from from its predecessors um with with a lot of really good moments in it and yeah so um i guess uh, we can i'm pretty sure we agree on the franchise rankings so i'm gonna go three two one um of my three two one and and i'm working under the presumption that you guys agree um if I'm wrong, correct me. So number I, three, I think we're gonna agree. Yeah, I, I think so too. We've talked for two hours. I've gotten a pretty good sense of where everyone stands on it, and, and I feel pretty confident in saying that number three for everyone is The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, correct. And I feel pretty confident that everyone feels that their number two is Batman Begins. Yeah. Yes. And thus, number one for everyone would be The Dark Knight. Yeah. Correct. All right. So I figured that was that was. Uh, pretty pretty easy to get through there i i do think again batman begins is the better depiction of the batman character itself but it's speaking in terms of quality of the movie I, I think that 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 one two three ranking there is it's 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 right um but i did want to ask you guys briefly um since since we've been here for a while um you know do you guys have any kind of parting words 
or anything like that? I was trying to think of my favorite superhero trilogy. So, you know, obviously there's the, the Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. There's Captain America, Iron Man, Thor. Um, there'll be more to come, you know, like Guardians and things like that. And X-Men sort of has like multiple trilogies. And this is easily top two for me. I could, it's hard to say whether I put it one or two versus the Captain America trilogy, but it's easily one or two. I think it's more iconic. In my opinion, it's more iconic. Yeah, I just really like the this two Winter Soldier and Civil War. No, those are really lot. good. They're super you good. Know, so, but it's, I I can't remember the last time I got hyped up for a movie like I got hyped up for these. Like rewatching them. Don't get me wrong. I'll watch fair. Captain America if it's on TV or whatever. I'll throw it in. I'll enjoy it. But I don't know, man. I got physically excited with, when certain things happened during this trilogy. Um, and maybe it's that's a result of me not watching it in a long time. Or um, I don't know what it is. But um, I, I don't And I always liked Batman as a character in general. Um, even before these movies. But I don't know. It's just really... I, I, there, as far as trilogies go, superhero tri- superhero trilogies, I think this is definitely. Uh, uh, I think it's probably it's probably my favorite. I would say I think it's really fucking good. I really enjoy it. Not that the other, not that the Captain America movies are are you know they're probably better movies, more consistent and everything else. But um, I don't know. These just hold a very special place in my heart. I think, and I think they always will. They just. I think that's a result of when they came out and and my um I don't know, my love for the for them when they came out, you know? It's like one of those childhood nostalgic things, I think. Yeah. And we talked a little bit about how we all compare it to other live action Batmans. Um but what are your takes on how this compares to just all Batman's, including some of the the animated series. You know, I grew up. I was I was real young when the animated series was out. I always really enjoyed that. And uh, Batman Beyond, Batman Beyond was my shit. Yeah, I loved yeah. it. Um, do you remember that one Batman cartoon with the um, Phantasm or whatever it was? Mask of the Phantasm. Yes. The movie. Yeah. It was. A, yeah. It was. A, it was a movie that was in the animated series continuity. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Um, the animated series was awesome i really enjoyed that um but it's it's uh it's just i don't know they're all just so different you know um i think that i think as far as cartoon goes i think the batman animated series is probably one of the best yeah and i think kevin conroy's voice of batman is iconic so i i i read batman comics hearing kevin conroy in my head absolutely what um what'd you say in sorry, the, sorry, the, sorry, the, Batman. The, it's true though. <laughs> the the video games, Arkham Asylum trilogy yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, Batman's got a lot of really good. He's an excellent IP. He's got really good villains. Um, uh, he's a he's an he's just an incredible character. Uh, and he's something that he's somebody that everybody can relate to. I think. Um, more so than a lot of other characters. You know, I mean, he's got to do with fear and overcoming fear, and and just that. Uh, He's just, um, I don't know. I think he's probably he's probably my favorite superhero. Superhero. He's probably my favorite. Um, and I don't. I'm definitely not alone in saying that. I mean, he's a lot of people's favorite superhero, and sometimes a lot of people that's the only hero they they really know. You know, uh, maybe not so much that Marvel's so big now, but um, he's definitely a cultural icon, and um, he's an important character in 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 modern. I mean, he's super important. I think he was the first. Did he was he around before Superman? As far as like movies and stuff goes, in movies? like Americana, um, do we know? Uh, I think maybe they were like hand in hand. Yeah. Well, I think comics wise, I think that Superman predates him by a yeah. few years at most, but not by any significant amount of time. 
He's, but he's an incre- the point my point was, I mean, he's just he's an incredibly important character for Americana, you know, and um and and seeing him realized uh, now, you know, with the, with the, the current standing with the DC universe, it's 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 really a shame um that he's taken the turn that he has because he's he he's got such a um it used to be that that he had such a uh, his his vindictions for why he does what he does and how he does what he does uh they're the cornerstones of the character and seeing those cornerstones bent and and broken uh the way that DC is doing it now it's really disappointing um uh but the character as a whole uh and I think is portrayed so well in this trilogy um and it's not only the characterization of Batman, but his villains and his nemesis and and the fucking scores and the cinematography and the direction that they go in. I think it's just it's the they're just so well made. Um, and uh, they're, they're, they're movies that I'm really passionate about. I really enjoy these movies. And if you haven't seen them, definitely fucking watch them. Yeah, I think top to bottom, this this has to be one of the best it's probably the best superhero trilogy. I'd agree with that, even though I adore the Captain America trilogy. Um, I, I think it's probably one of the best trilogies, period. Because again, trilogies are hard. You know, usually they they falter along the way, and this one did slightly. But I think that again, taken as a complete package, and it, it even rises for all its faults, as I mentioned. I think ends very strongly. Um, so I think that there's there's a lot to really like here, and it's you know, in spite of it being a quote unquote you know superhero trilogy it's more than that isn't it you it's know, elevated absolutely I, 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 th- I don't think people look at it in the same vein as the marvel movies that come out they don't even look at it in the same vein as the dc movies that come out you know no and obviously there's that's that's putting aside quality in terms of kind of what's going on with dc they're now. academy award nominated winning movies they're but really yeah, good yeah like they're up there you know like these things entered pop culture into a big way i think that they will stand the test of time heath ledger's performance as the joker will stand the test of time i think for for a long time coming christian bale is going to be the definitive live action batman for a lot of people myself included um and i i think it's it's a tall task to try to replicate anything like this and and, you know dc hasn't necessarily tried to replicate it you know again they haven't tried to make a fourth movie as as kind of an add-on to this they've they've left it alone and kind of pushed into a different direction which i think is the right move but they you know since 2012 you know it's it's there's been a steady decline in quality but see, I was excited to see a Ben Affleck Batman with that gray and black Batman thing, you know, the suit. I, I was ex- I was genuinely excited to see that. Um, I'm excited to see a different take on Batman. It would um, not not character breaking take, you know, but sure. Um, it it I I would take a different Batman. I would take a different Joker. Um, but they're just God, they're just so disappointing. Well, and see, and and that's the thing is they've missed the mark so bad on those. And, and and this one, I think that in spite of making lots of changes to characters, both design-wise and personality-wise, like Bane, for example, has really nothing to do with his comic book counterpart other than he's a big dude that wears a mask. That's, that's he's about grounded. where the he's similarities He's a grounded, badass in. character, you know? But he's well-realized more or less on his own terms. There's, there you know, it's... It, there's respect paid to the spirit of his character, I think, and I think Marvel has done a great job with that in the MCU. Is let's capture the spirit arc of our characters, even if we're not quite making a one-to-one realization. And I think that you know you don't you don't the lesson to take away, I think, from from the Dark Knight trilogy and th- something I think that that WB should apply to all their future movies is that you know you don't have to 100% abide by what the comic books say like this is batman you know it's okay to change things but you need to honor the spirit of the character and i think that the dark knight trilogy really succeeded in that it it, it gave bruce wayne a really successful arc and i think that the dc movies to this point have just missed the mark on capturing the spirit of their characters wonder woman aside 
which I think did the best job of that. And uncoincidentally, it's the best movie that they've put out in their, you know, their DCEU that they've done. So I, I think that, you know, my, my final thoughts on the Dark Knight trilogy is this is kind of a benchmark to look to, but it's not a benchmark that, you know, you, you don't, you don't have to move, make the movies the same way. Like you don't, I mean, they've kind of done it, but like X-Men shouldn't be grounded in the way that the Dark Knight was. It should be no. something else entirely. But, you've but gotta, that's what makes the grounding of Batman is what makes Batman such a compelling character. You know what I mean? He's He has no powers. He the, So you make a grounded movie around that. You can't have... I think that's probably why... It's probably one facet of a multifaceted shitball that the new DC movies are. But it's kind of hard to make a movie um, about Batman with Batman in it and him kicking ass along, you know, fighting alongside all these other people, you know, like the, the, I don't know how to explain what I'm trying to say. The universe that everything takes place in with these new DC movies is not, it does not seem like a place where Batman should be thriving. Does it make sense? Well, he's not, he's completely fucking useless in justice league. So, okay. Well, I guess, I guess it does make sense. And that's why it's a shit. <laughs> fucking stupid um and well I, I think batman can work in the justice league he could I, I think you need to get everything else in the justice league right and i think that's largely where that film faltered and also the batman itself visually is on point but character wise is a complete fucking mess um i i think that the problems with the dceu and good good lord we could spend another hour on this at least i think that the problems start with the man of steel the misapplication of the Dark Knight formula to a character where that that formula does not make any sense. You mean Superman where Superman is, snaps next? That and and Superman is not a character that that demands a grounded, gritty take. No, I mean obviously they didn't pull a bullshit of him not flying and not being an alien. They had that, but the filmmaking style was extremely consistent with the Dark Knight trilogy, and that was their starting point for the universe. And then they kind of worked backward from that and added all these elements in it that didn't feel congruous with that. I think that's where the problem starts. Superman is a dour asshole in line with kind of the tone that the Dark Knight trilogy world was. And then they kind of added magic around him and Aquaman. And and there's so much in that's so scattered in a way that none of it makes any sense. Right. And I think that's kind of where the problems start. And I think that to course correct, I, I think you blow it up. I think you blow it to high hell and start anew personally. But I think that you need to realize a tone that, again, honors the spirits of the characters and adapts them in a way that's respectful to the source material that, that keeps kind of true to what the point of it is. Like, again, this is a very personal story about Bruce Wayne. It plays fast and loose with Batman as a character. Some of his, his villains are a little bit different or very a lot different. But it honors kind of the the, the, the core of what the, vein, the comics right. tried to do. And I think that as long as you can really aspire to that and realize that, then I think that, you know, that's that's the model. I think that's what that's what the Dark Knight teaches you is don't don't make this movie and just slap this onto Superman because that doesn't work. Find what works for Superman in the comics, pull out of that what you can, and then make a movie with that. That's that's the Marvel model of Iron Man is this. Let's modernize it, change some things up, change a little bit of the mythology, change his characterization a little bit, but we're keeping true to the spirit of the character. And then that was that was that was their ground zero. And then twenty movies later, look what happened. They're very successful. Start, you start we start with, you know, the misapplication of everything from the Dark Knight to Superman, and then you look where we are six years, five years later. It's like <laughs> it's night and day, you know? And um Anyway, you know, that's <laughs> it's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother thing. But yeah, it's it's frustrating that we know WB is capable of this quality. And, and, you know, also don't hire fucking Zack Snyder to spearhead your universe coming off of Christopher Nolan. Jesus. Yeah, it's like, why the fuck? Why, why didn't you hit Christopher Nolan up? Maybe Christopher Nolan said, I don't want to direct your shit. Nolan Maybe produced he's... Man of Steel, to be fair. But I don't know that he was super involved with the process of okay. it well. um but but yeah anyway um henry uh i mean sorry andrew and i kind of <laughs> went uh went a little uh we found the weeds with the goosey there but uh do you have any have any last minute thoughts 
Uh, no, I mean, I feel like we, we hit it. Batman, again, is such an iconic character. He's going to be around for 80 years next year, and pretty much everyone knows his origin story, largely in part to this series, um, at least like in today's time. So it just kind of shows you the impact. And this is probably some people's only uh, depiction that they've seen of Batman. So this is the definitive Batman for a lot of people, whether it's because this is the only one they've seen or because it's one of the best medium, you know, outside of maybe some animated stuff. All right. Well, I think I think we can say that that covers it and that you heard it here first, definitively. Um, so I think I think we can go ahead and wrap this uh, episode that has somehow been uh, this long about three movies. We had a lot to talk about. A lot, a lot. Of, you know, obviously movies that we really, really enjoy mean a lot to us uh, growing up on these movies. But um, for those of you that have stuck around for this uh, two-hour episode, we thank you for listening. Uh, if you enjoyed what you heard, please spread the word to your friends, um, especially if you're a Patreon supporter. Um, you know, maybe get someone to support us on Patreon too, um, and that way they can get. Uh, access to bonus episodes before everyone else, uh, early access to all of our regular episodes before everyone else. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty good incentive right there. Um, our website is www.watchreviewrepeat.com. All of our episodes are up there. Uh, news, upcoming episodes that we'll be working on for the regular feed, um, alongside, uh, that, that premium tab, which will get you to our Patreon. If that is something that interests you, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions uh, about Dark Knight Trilogy, anything, please uh, send that over to our Gmail account, which is watchreviewrepeat at gmail.com. Our intro and outro track is Mechanolith by Kevin McLeod, licensed under the Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. Henry, I think uh, Andrew and I would like to thank you for joining us for another episode. Uh, we always appreciate you coming on. And... Um, we had we we've spent a lot of time with you talking Marvel, so it was actually kind of fun to have you on to talk a little DC. Um, in in contrast, yeah, no, thank you for having me. Uh, I don't get a Marvel paycheck from this, but uh, you know, I, <laughs> I unfortunately none of us do. I do it because I love you guys. So you know, anytime. Yeah. Uh, do you have any socials you would like people to look you up on or anything? Uh, yeah, I mainly use my Twitter for you know the more fun things, uh, and that's heroic underscore enrique on the twitter web um yeah. on the twits is that what people say no i don't i don't think people say that uh i'm out of the loop <laughs> you probably shouldn't call anyone uh, a twit hit me up on the twits <laughs> yeah all right um <laughs> uh, <laughs> Until next time, I think that is going to be it from Watch, Review, Repeat. Uh, does anyone have a last-minute request for Batman to, to take us out? Good Batman quote. Um, no, we're not even in it. It's not a um, um, Let's see. It's not a car. Do you ever say that one yet? Have you said that one oh, yet? I got it. What is it? <laughs>